sideline and prevent, try to prevent it from going out of bounds. It has been a gorgeous day here in Fresno. Clear skies now. The temperature 65 degrees. The winds from the northwest to 10. A beautiful night for football. Natural grass surface here in the doghouse, as they call it. Bulldog Stadium. Capacity is 30,000. We may be over that before the night is through because when you see people move out under the berm into the grass area, you know that they have more than 30,000 tickets sold. Belli will kick it off. Calhoun will be the deep man, but they're kind of sneaking Calhoun around a little bit right now, trying to make sure that he gets in a position where he can catch the ball. So he may be in the corner or may try to move, move up in the corner. Look at his career stats for kickoff returns. He is a brilliant kickoff return man. Let's see if he gets the initial kickoff. He will. At about the 12-yard line, Calhoun across the 20, down to about the 23-yard line. So Ronnie Barber will be the quarterback. He wears number 11. He will lead his offense on the field. Ronnie Barber has come on strong. He had maybe his best game of the year last week, and he's got some help. Calhoun will be the eye back, the tailback. Mark Hood will be blocking in front of him. You see Barber's stats. Calhoun and Hood, the running backs. White and Gibbs, the primary receivers. Darrell, the men up front. Hammond, Benson, Florentine, Gillis. Keep your eye on Florentine and Gillis. It's first and ten. The ball at the 22-yard line. We're just underway. As always, the first carry of the night goes to the tailback, Calhoun. He'll get maybe a yard, and that's all. And defensively, here are the down linemen. Walker, Olsen, and Jethro Franklin, who has the 17 and a half sacks. Grayson, yes, that's Dave Grayson's son. O'Leary, Nunn, and Hanneman will be moving around a lot. Hanneman leads the team in tackles. The secondary, Williamson, Wilburn, Webster, and Stewart. A gain of a yard. Barber fakes the play ahead. Now he's in some trouble. Barber is going to be dropped back at the 17-yard line. And you saw Walker come up to make the tackle. Mike Walker, number 90. That's what they have done so very effectively coming in. They have put pressure on the quarterback continuously. Well, they're the number one rated defense in the PC2A. And for very good reason, number 67, Jethro Franklin, he puts the pressure on. He forces the quarterback out of the pocket. Barber then is sacked by number 90, Mike Walker. Good defense makes for good offense, and they've had a good defense. They say this is the best defense they've had here in Fresno, and that's saying something because they've had some awfully good football games. It should be third down, ball at the 17, so that will make it third down and about 16, but we're going to go back a little bit farther because there's a penalty that will take it back inside of the 10-yard line. Let's get the word from Larry Rice. Personal foul on the offense, third down. Obviously a dead ball foul. It'll be third down. The ball goes back to the 8-yard line. <laughs> It's third and long for Barber. Barber is the third quarterback that has started this year for Fullerton State. Calhoun hit at the line of scrimmage and hit hard. First man there was Jethro Franklin, number 67. You will see him all night long as he fills from his end position. John, if the fans who are watching, fans of, of Fullerton, if they're saying, why did they run the ball here? The one thing you don't want to do if you're Fullerton is to shoot yourself in the foot, create turnovers and situations where you get out of the ball game early. So they want to be confident that they don't get themselves in trouble here early. They'll try to make Fresno earn the points that they get. Jim Saroy in his own end zone. The punt to Stephen Baker, the touchdown maker. Baker being driven back in his own territory, hands it at the 45-yard line. Across midfield, one block, picks up an extra five yards. He's out of bounds at the 44-yard line. So for the first time tonight, we will see Sweeney. Kevin Sweeney, number nine, the quarterback, will lead this offensive team. But he's got a lot of help out there. Big yardage. He's closing in on the record of Doug Moody, the all-time record. With him in the backfield, James Williams will be the tailback. Anthony Mosley will be the fullback. Baker, Taylor, the wide receiver. Paul Blue will be the tight end. They run a lot to Shalatza and Whitakum to their side of the field. First down ball at the 44-yard line. The pitch comes to Williams. He's got two blockers in front of flag is down. He runs out of bounds very close to a first down as they spot it at the 33. And has checked the call. Again, our referee tonight is Larry Rice. 
The offside call goes against Cal State Fullerton. The game's all the way down inside the 33, so it'll be a first down. Gogarty, Knight, and McLean are the down linemen for the Titans. Foy, Brian, Hip, and Chisholm, the linebackers. Brian has had an injury problem. Hip is a great story. We'll talk more about him later. Hill, Howard, Shackle, and Baker in that defensive secondary. Baker, the rover back, will be all over the field. So it's a first down on the first play from scrimmage for Fresno State. Sweeney will throw. Rolls to his right. The pass is overthrown. Incomplete down near the five yard line. Baker was down there. Ron Jenkins, you'll see a lot of him, number 82, in there as well. James Howard, number two, defensively. So Sweeney's first pass of the night is incomplete. He rolled out. We were told that he's primarily a drop back passer. Five steps to fire. This time he decided to move away from the pressure. But I think if he continues to roll out, John, one thing that he will want to be careful of, and that's not to try to challenge the defensive players. If he gets close to the sideline, I think he'll step out to try to prevent another shoulder injury. Williams and Mosley Swift. The top of the screen. Big hole for the fullback, Mosley. He'll have about seven. So they'll be looking at a third down play. We are going to go down to the field for the first time tonight, get the play so we can see what uh, Fresno State will do on third down. Let's go down to the field now. And it's Chris Dugan, number 84, an extra tight end. Right and right, 628 flat. You heard the call coming from Dave Telford. It is third and three. Brady pass off the fingertips of number one, Gene Taylor. Howard was there, but Taylor had the inside on him that time, could not hang on to the football. This is exactly the defense that Sweeney wanted. Kevin Sweeney finds number one, Gene Taylor, all by himself to the post. The ball is thrown. To me, it looks, well, it's a tad high, but I think that uh, he should have caught this ball. I think that maybe he looked back in the lights and didn't pick it up because he didn't jump for it, John. It wasn't that much high over his head. Just a little bit of effort, and I think he would have had six points. So Belli on to attempt a 42-yard field goal. Belli's kick looks long enough. It is good. Barry Belli boots one through from 42, and with 12-12 to play in the first quarter, he has given the Bulldogs of Fresno State the lead. This is Jeep's all-new 4-liter six-cylinder engine. It has sequential multi-point electronic fuel injection. It puts out 173 horsepower and 220 foot-pounds of torque. But most important, if you put this new engine in a Jeep Cherokee or Jeep Comanche, you're going to see more speed and power than you've ever seen from vehicles like this. Just remember where you saw it first. Runny nose, watery eyes, congestion, and a headache. When you've got all these sinus symptoms all together, you've got sinus complex. And that's too complex a problem for most cold or sinus remedies. You need maximum strength Sinutab, specially developed to relieve all the symptoms of sinus complex. Sinutab. You'll feel altogether better. And take new Sinutab nighttime at night to feel altogether better in the morning. Friday, two knockout artists battle for the North American Junior Welterweight Crown. Harold Brazier meets Brian Baronet live Friday night on ESPN. Barry Belli moving closer to becoming Fresno State's all-time leading scorer with another field goal as he kicked it through. Belli now successful on 15 out of 22. That was 42 yards, as long as 55. And he'll kick it off. far side of the field. Diving forward is Eric Franklin, number 29, who took that short kick. Franklin moves it out across the 20-yard line. It took him five plays. They covered 44 yards, and then there he is. Barry Belli with a 42-yard field goal. So for the second time tonight, Barber back on the field. 
The football spotted exactly where it was on their first possession, the 23-yard line. Talk about possession. The game of football really is about field possession. And one thing that Fullerton must do is that they must gain a couple of first downs in order to get Fresno playing back on their half of the football field. Gibson White, the wide receiver. Barber looking for White. Throws it short instead to Hood, the fullback. He's knocked down immediately as he gets close to the 27-yard line. Greg Williamson hit him. He went to the short man, went to the fullback, Hood out of the backfield. Fresno goes into a roll zone defense. That means the cornerback comes up and takes the short, flat area. So when Mark Hood comes out to get this reception, the cornerback, number 28, Greg Williamson, is right there to make the tackle. A gain of five on the play. It'll be second down and five. Both wide receivers now. White and gets to the top of the screen. Calhoun reverses his field. He'll be dropped for a loss of a yard. Cliff Hanneman, number 77, coming in. He had 69 tackles. And against Pacific, he had 10 solos, 18 total in the game. Hanneman is all over the field. John, it's no secret that uh, Fullerton is going to have a tough time running the ball against this defense. Coming into the game, the Bulldogs ranked number one in the PC2A against the rush. They only give up about 71 yards per game. Tough to run against. This time they split the running backs instead of going out of the eye formation. Straight back is Barber. Looks up the middle. He's under pressure. And they've got him for the second time tonight. That is Ramsey, Greg Ramsey, number 87. It's the second sack in the first two possessions of the ball game. Another sack for this outstanding defense. Good defense goes hand in hand. You need a good pass rush, but you also need good pass coverage. The Bulldogs are playing zone coverage. Then they shift around. The people are covered. Ron Barber is a quarterback. He looks downfield, sees no one open. Greg Ramsey comes up with a big sack. And again, the Bulldogs will get the ball in good field position. It was a 45-yarder on Saroy's first attempt. There is Stephen Baker. Baker will get the ball about midfield. Again. Trying to kick away from Baker. It takes a hop that favors Fresno. And he's picked up at the 35-yard line. So excellent field position for the Bulldogs of Fresno State. They have jumped ahead of Cal State Fullerton here in Fresno, California. There's something new on the road. It's built by Jeep. It's the kind of truck only Jeep could build. But it's also the kind of truck just about anybody can afford. The new short bed Jeep Comanche sport truck. It's worth a look. When my new sales manager told me that I had to stay at a Econo Lodge, I was not happy. Because I'm a Ramada Inn, Howard Johnson's kind of guy. I was so worried about what I'd find here, I even brought my own towels. But no problem. An Econolodge room is just like those other rooms, except it's about 15 bucks a night less on the average. Got the same nice bed, same nice phone, same nice color TV. And look at this. Great towels. Econolodge. Spend a night, not a fortune. Joe Paterno said it before he played Alabama. Don't worry about who we play. Worry about how we play. And you'll see them play West Virginia right here on ESPN. Two years ago, ESPN cameras were there for one of the greatest victories ever in Morgantown, West Virginia. Yes, the ears defeated Penn State. They'll try to do it again. Hope you'll join us. It all starts at 7 with the Hartford Insurance Group College Football Report with Larry Burnett, Chris Berman, and Vino Cook. And then at 7.30, live from Morgantown and Mountaineer Field, it'll be the game between Penn State and West Virginia. Certainly a... A big, big game for the Mountaineers who go in with a record of 2-5. and five. Good field position for Sweeney. They got a field goal on their first possession. Ball at the 36-yard line. Sweeney will throw on first down. Deflected at the line of scrimmage. Sweeney's pass was knocked down at the line of scrimmage. I think it was Quentin Knight who knocked that ball down, and it's a very good thing because he had a receiver who was coming open on a crossing pattern. The one thing that we're likely to see tonight from Fresno is a lot of crossing patterns because teams, because of Sweeney's ability to throw deep, are playing a lot of deep zone. If he sees the deep zone, he'll throw to his men underneath, especially the crossing routes. Baker to the bottom of the screen, Taylor to the top. He goes instead to Williams out of the backfield. At the 30 to 25, he's out of bounds. 
It's a first down. The Bulldogs of Fresno State. Howard made the defensive play, but Williams delayed, took it out of the backfield, and picks up good yardage. This is just a little screen pass out to the right. You, as a quarterback, you want the linebackers to take their drops, gets the ball outside to Williams, who makes a great run here, breaks the tackle, gets to the outside, and picks up a big game. Now, a running back like Williams on a team with a quarterback as good as Sweeney is didn't run on a whole lot until Sweeney got shoulder problems. In the last few weeks, he's really picked up the slack. And here is Williams following the lead of his fullback. At the 15, he runs it back at the 10. He's dropped inside the 10-yard line. Brian Kazarian leading the blocking, number 64 from the guard spot. The tackle was made by number 30, Trent Baker. You know, John, I was talking about the fact that the running backs had to pick up the slack when Sweeney bruised his shoulder. James Williams shows how they were able to do that. Against Pacific, they ran the ball 27 times in a row. They're known for their passing, but as you can see here, they have the ability. They have the linemen and the running backs to get the job done on the ground. Let's see if they can overload one side or the other. They'll run out of the I formation, and then Sweeney sees something defensively he doesn't like. He'll go back to the bench. Still 9.20 to play in the first quarter. Sweeney and Fresno State up by a field goal looking for more. Announcing the Valvoline Four Guard I Love a Parade Sweepstakes. Win a trip for four to four of America's greatest parades. To enter, watch the next commercial and remember what the driver of the smoking car says. Then go to a participating store for details. Big parade this year. It's the economy. Russell, what kind of motor oil are you using? Motor oil, motor oil. Motor oil definitely is not motor oil. A four-cylinder engine works harder and needs the extra protection of specially formulated Valvoline Foreguard. Not much of a break this year. It's the economy. Oh, Russell. Experience an incredible advance in Gillette shaving smoothness. Atra Plus. The Plus is the white luper smooth strip that releases lubricants as you shave. You never felt anything smoother. Atra Plus by Gillette. The essence of shaving. Welcome back once again. It is 3 0 Fresno State. I'm John Sanders with Gene Washington. The folks here in the San Joaquin Valley would like everybody in the country to know that FSU is Fresno State. It is not Florida State, the Bulldogs. Now, this Bulldogs aren't from Georgia. They're from Fresno. First and goal at the six yard line. Spinning inside to about the four yard line is Williams. That was Jeff Hip that hit him first, tripped him up. Reggie Hill finished off the tackle. It'll be second and goal, the ball at the four. They got the football at the 36 after a punt that took a Fresno State bounce. A couple of first downs, a 13-yard gain, and then a 17-yard gain. And let's see what they can do on second down. Less than nine minutes left, first quarter from Fresno. Williams for the one. Leading the blocking was... Anthony Mosley, the fullback. Now let's go down to the sidelines and our sideline mic and see what the call will be on third and one. TV left. Coach, we got TV left. 50 lead. He had left. That's an overline flow to the left side. You see it there. See the four down linemen to the left of the quarterback, Sweeney. The full house backfield. Mosley dives in for the score. Anthony Mosley. The heavy T, as they call it, produces a touchdown. Well, they take an offensive tackle from the right side, move him over to the left side, get a lot of beef there, and they give it to their touchdown maker, number 37, Anthony Mosley. He's a short yardage man. Does the Sam Bam Cunningham move here up and over the top for six points. And Fullerton now has themselves really in a tough situation. They started off with poor field position. Fresno has capitalized on it. They jump out in front. The extra point attempt is coming up. Belli. Jenkins is the holder. The snapper is higher and the kick is true. So Belli is successful on the point after. He's 24 of 25. He now has four points. He's closing in on the Fresno State all-time scoring record, and he has helped his team to a 10-0 lead. Thanks to that overload, they call it the heavy T, and it produced a touchdown. The heavy T because on the right side of your screen, an additional tackle is over there. He's about 6'6", 280. 
They come in there with all that beat. They give it to their best short yardage tailback, Anthony Mosley, and he goes up and over. Let's look at it again, a different angle. And you can see that they drive the line of scrimmage back. There's no one there really to challenge him up high. He goes up and over and easily scores a touchdown. Give the credit to that for the offensive line, especially on the left side, Mike Chancellor and Mike Whitaker. Ten nothing. Fresno State jumping ahead of Fullerton State. And of course, if you're Fullerton State, uh, this is exactly what you didn't want to happen. You have not had field position, and you've given up a quick ten points. Fullerton thus far a minus 14 in total offense. Fresno State with 55. That's the man they like to get the football to on the kickoff. Rick Calhoun. Of course, if you're Barry Belli kicking off, you don't want to go to him. You'd rather it went to. Eric Franklin or Mark Hill. Fullerton has got to find some way to get better field position. They can't keep starting down there, turning the ball over to Fresno inside their own territory. We'll do it all over again. Well, this, this may be the key. If they can get a few more of these and get Fresno to start kicking off from a little further back, they just, they must get some better field position. Otherwise, they're going to be in for a long, long evening. And of course, Belli doing exactly what we expected, trying to keep the ball away from Rick Calhoun because he's so explosive. Working the sidelines in his seventh season and hoping for a home field soon is Coach Gene Murphy. 36 and 42 record. Spent a couple of years at North Dakota. That's Jim Sweeney on the other side. You actually played against his team at one time, right, Gene? Down on the field before the game, he reminded me that he was coaching at Washington State. He said, we had you guys beat at Stanford until you caught a touchdown. I said, is that you and the coach over there pulling this hair out? I said, you still have some left, though. <laughs> So, Belli will do it again. He kicked the field goal at 12-12 to make it 3-0. Exactly four minutes later, Anthony Mosley scored a one-yard touchdown run. It is 10-0 with the ball now back at the 30. And a chance, obviously, for Calhoun if he can get the football. Fullerton really needs something good to happen to them. I mean, here's a team that doesn't have a home field. Like terrible record. They need something right now to ignite them to feel like they can get back in this football game. Excellent kick, though, by Belli. Drives him inside the five, and he has no place to go. That time, Calhoun had to run so far to run it down. We do have a flag on the field, and he had no chance to return it. James Rivers made the tackle, but Calhoun really took himself out of position tracking down the football. Let's check the call. Well, exactly what you didn't want, Gene. They're going to have bad field position once again because of the clip. It took them six plays to cover 36 yards, Mosley getting the touchdown, and it is 10 nothing. For Mosley, only his second rushing touchdown. Took a minute and 47 off the clock. The ball would be back inside the 10-yard line at the 8. So they've started twice on the 23. You can see the difference in yardage thus far. Now starting inside at their own eight-yard line. Both wide receivers, Gibbs and White, come to the bottom of the screen. They'll work out of the eye. They may need to put the ball up in the air on first down. It's their best chance. They go to the tailback. Calhoun will push it up across the 10 near the 15-yard line before he's finally dropped on the play. Ramsey made the tackle. I think uh, Rick Calhoun made most of this yardage on his own. You can see that there's a real mesh at the line of scrimmage. Again, Fullerton leads the league against the rush. He's not going to get a lot in there, but he just continues to keep those feet moving, and he gains another four or five yards on his own. But again, if they want to throw the football, I think the down to do it is on first down and not when they get in an obvious passing situation because of that tremendous rush from the Bulldogs. Well, you can see the job that he has done with those rushing totals. Second down short, he'll get it again. First down as he dives to the 20-yard line. Greg and Tate made the tackle. Tate is now the nose guard in place of Olsen. Olsen very small for a nose guard, but he's out of the lineup right now. Ramsey, Franklin, David Grayson, whose dad, of course, played for the Raiders. He's a transfer from Cal Poly. Walker is in there in place of Ramsey right now. Nunn, O'Leary, Hanneman. Hanneman, who's all over the field, number 77. Calhoun now with five carries for 13 yards. He's having to earn that yardage, as he always does when he plays against Fresno State. Ball at the 21st and 10. Calhoun dances to the 25 near the 29-yard line before he's dropped. Anthony Nunn, the linebacker, 
The junior from California made the tackle on Calhoun. This play is a combination of good blocking by number 78, James Good. Seals off the middle linebacker, and watch this move by Calhoun. A little spin. Makes number three miss, Byron Nichols, and picks up another four or five yards. That's the thing that impresses me most about Rick Calhoun is when he breaks that line of scrimmage, it's very difficult to bring down one-on-one. -on -one. Very shifty. About a yard and a half to go for the first down, and there is the first down as he moves across the 30 to the 31. So they go their workhorse in this situation. Rick Calhoun, the senior from Riverside, he's across the 30 to the 31. That'll be enough for a first down. John, they finally got themselves in a position on the football field where they can operate without being in the shadow of their own end zone. But again, I don't believe they can make a living running the football against this team. And I'm sort of of the opinion that Tommy Prothrow once had, and I've talked to Coach Sweeney about it down on the sideline, you have so many plays in which you can score before you usually turn that ball over. I think now's the time maybe they should put it in the air. First down, they're expecting the run, put it in the air. Gibson White, with wide receivers to the bottom of the screen. Let's see what Barber does. Nope, he goes to Calhoun and tries to get outside. He's got about three yards on the play before he's dragged down from behind. You can see chasing on the play. Walker was there. Jethro Franklin, number 67 there as well. John O'Leary following up the play. Calhoun's totals 27 yards thus far. Averages 115 yards a game. He'll get a blow right now as Tracy Pierce will take over for him. It'll be second down, seven. Ball to 34. They shift into the eye with Pierce behind Hood. It is Pierce with the football. He's got a little bit of a crack, and he's got a first down across the 40, near the 44-yard line. Tom Holler leading the blocking. Jethro Franklin, number 67, coming into the game with 17 and a half sacks. I think he was expecting pass because he jumps upfield too much, and he gets blocked out by a nice trap block. And Fullerton is on the move, and they're doing it in a way which is very, very surprising because they're running the ball well against the number one rated rushing defense in the league. How much longer that can continue to go on, I'm not quite sure, but this drive has been an exceptional drive, and you have to give credit to the offensive line. And the sideline huddle for Coach Jim Sweeney. He's got Byron Nichols, number three, in that defensive secondary now, along with Webster, Stewart, and Williamson. Nunn, O'Leary, Hanneman, and Grayson, the linebackers. Walker, Ataid, and Jethro Franklin. And coming up next week, we will once again keep track of what happens with Kevin Sweeney as Fresno State goes on the road. They'll be playing in Las Vegas, the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. He came into tonight 652 yards short. Who knows where he'll be next Thursday night, but you can stay with him and stay with us right here on ESPN. Coach Jim Sweeney and his son Kevin will be back on once again. Both coaches using sideline huddles for their entire offense and defense that time. We have 5-11 play first quarter. It is 10-0. The Bulldogs lead the Titans. John, of course, every team that plays Fresno wants to keep the ball out of Sweeney's hands. And the best way to do that is to run the ball. You can keep possession of the ball as clock runs down. Uh, obviously, it appears that that's what Fullerton is trying to do. They're trying to get their ground game going, but secondarily trying to keep the football away from a very dangerous Kevin Sweeney. 5-11 remaining first quarter, 10-0. Fresno State leads Cal State Fullerton. Ronnie Barber had his best game of the year last week. See in there? Pierce in motion. Calhoun is still on the bench. Reverse to Pierce. They were waiting for that one. You saw Michael Stewart. He stayed home. He played it perfectly. Number five makes the play defensively. John, obviously Coach Sweeney on the sideline said we have to do something to disrupt this running game. He comes with a blitz. Left side of your screen, you'll see number five coming in, Mike Stewart. He is there because they had an all-out blitz. This kind of play with the defense can disrupt a good running game. Now, Bulletin has to think about, are they coming again with the blitz? What are we going to do? We'll find out. Calhoun is back in the game at tailback. White and Gibbs to the top of the street. Quick hit to the fullback from Rue for Hood. Mark Hood, a first down and more. Calls his way down to the 36 yard line of Fresno State. Webster Williamson riding to the ground. What makes this play happen really is the defensive call by Fresno. 
They blitz the linebackers from the outside. Number five comes in again. So when Hood breaks the line of scrimmage, there really isn't anyone there except the defensive backs. The wide receivers get down. They don't really make good blocks, but they get in the way. But what made this play happen was a defensive call by Fresno. They blitz. And it was a nice call, nice hole there. The good run by Mark Hood. About 22 yards on the play for Hood. Ball at the basics, first and ten for the first time tonight. Fullerton State is in Fresno State territory, and they go again to the fullback hood. He tries to bounce outside and can't do it. He runs into a stone wall right in the middle of that lineup. Stewart is there. Also Mike Walker, number 90, and Anthony Nunn, number 96, plugging the middle. No game. Coach Murphy on the sideline certainly has to feel good about this uh, particular drive by his offense. Now they're in, they're in good position now. Now they're playing on Fresno's half of the football. Coach Sweeney doesn't like this. He'd like to have it the other way. But this team is doing a good job. Ronnie Barber hasn't put it in the air a whole lot. Maybe he'll think about doing it at this point. He's got both wide receivers to the bottom of the screen. Gibbs and White. On the wide receivers, he looks quick outside. Gets it in the hands of White. Inside the 30. Very close to a first down as he gets near the 26-yard line. Webster made the tackle, number 19, on top of him. But the quick pass, and White had some room. Ronnie Barber selecting to be very conservative when he throws the football. It's really just a quick little screen pass out to Todd White out here in the flat. They're trying to get him on a one-on-one -on -one situation to see if he can beat the defender. But number 19 is there to come up with the tackle, Rod Webster. A gain of 11 on the play, spotted 25, first and 10. An excellent drive for the Titans. Remember, they started on their own eight-yard line. White and Gibbs now to the top of the screen. Calhoun, still his feet. Picks up about five, just short of five yards. Kept his feet well that time, Gene. He certainly did. And he has very, very strong legs. Let's watch again. Franklin, number 67, sheds, his, sheds the blocker. Calhoun comes in, tries to reach around. But with a fellow who has strong legs like this, you can't do it with arm tackles. And Calhoun picks up another couple of yards. Giving five on the play. It'll be second down and five. Ball at the 20-yard line. An excellent drive for the Titans. The Cal State Fullerton. Barber hands to Calhoun. Tries to spin away from the defense and cannot do it. Right there is Anthony Nunn and John O'Leary. Number 96 and number 80, the two linebackers, plug the gap. They move it to the 19. Make it the 18. Give him two on the play. It'll be third down along three. Clock running a minute 50 left first quarter. All of a sudden, the Titans have come alive. Kalen White, now the wide receiver to the top of the screen. Barber rolls right. And he'll be run out of bounds at the 20 yard line. Barber run out by David Grayson. The outside linebacker, the strong side linebacker, stayed with him, forced him out. Nobody was open, it'll be fourth down. John, I think it's good play selection on the part of Fulton as we see Dave Grayson come back in at the chase and the quarterback Barber on the outside. They are being very conservative when they throw the football. When you roll out, I think they've told Barber, when you roll out, if no one is open, don't force the football. Take as much as you can can. Get out of bounds. We're down here in a scoring position. Let's not lose this opportunity. Let's see what they do. It is fourth down and five. Coming up for Fullerton State. The Titans trying to get on the scoreboard. This is the Nord. He loves to warm your pizza. If you've ever gotten cold pizza, a squash pizza, or pizza that just wasn't right, the Noid did it. Or a Domino's pizza, we avoid the Noid. So when you want hot, delicious, quality pizza delivered in less than 30 minutes, Domino's Pizza delivers. One call does it all. <laughs> Hi, old partner here. Me and Fastest both got our trading bridges on, making the best deals ever on these full-size Dodge trucks. Now, we call it a work truck because it's just that. Not a toy truck, but a full-size, made in a good old U.S. of A, ready to go to work pickup. And at Dutch Channel, you can buy this truck for $79.99. Now, even the little chicken's trying to tell you that's cheap. That's Dutch Channel, partner. Where they're cheap, cheap, cheap. 
see? One day after Lefty Grizzell resigns, his successor named at the University of Maryland. I'm Bob Lee. We'll have that story. Alan Massingale joins me after the football at midnight Eastern time. It would appear that Lynn Strandley is on to attempt the 37-yard field goal. I say appears because you never know what happens. Uh, one of the backup quarterbacks, Rich Sheriff, is the snapper. The holder is Barber, and here is Strandley. It'll be 37 yards. The kick is blocked and picked off. The Bulldogs of Fresno State. Grayson got in there, coming up with the football is Michael Stewart, number five, but credit David Grayson. And the folks in red love it here in the doghouse. The holder did not get the ball cleanly. Let's watch. The ball is low. You can see he's bobbling. And that's what allows the Bulldogs to come in and block this field goal attempt. Number 45, Dave Grayson. So at the 35, it'll be first down. The Bulldogs of Fresno State have the football back. They lead 10-0. A minute 28 left, first quarter. Sweeney looks down the middle, throws deep. There's Baker, and it's incomplete. Staying with him all the way on the play was James Howard, number two. But the touchdown maker, Stephen Baker, was going long that time. Kevin Sweeney throws the ball long as any quarterback I've seen in a long time. There you see the touchdown maker, Stephen Baker. But number two, James Howard, is way, way back there. He says, you're not going to get behind me. But the Bulldogs, what they want to do with a play like this, they may not come up with the reception, but what they're saying to you is that we will throw the ball deep and we'll let you know that. Second down, 10. Ball at the 35. A minute 21 to play. Baker in motion. Sweeney looks to him. Goes to him. Baker has it at the 40. Dances. Gets one more, and that's all. He's dropped on the play by Jeff Hip, number 59. So they tried to use Baker in motion that time, getting free. But so John, that gives you an idea of, of how they think on offense. They want the defense to know that if you're going to play zone, you better play a deep zone because we can throw deep. Then they come back with a little short things underneath. Less than a minute to play in the first quarter. Second down and four, ball at the 41. Baker and Smith to the top of the screen. Second down, Taylor in motion, Gene Taylor in motion. Sweeney, under the gun, gets rid of the football. Williams has it, and he's going to be dropped back inside the 40 at the 38-yard line. John, it's amazing that Kevin Sweeney was actually able to get this football off. He uh, was actually in the grass, and I thought he was on his way down for a sack, but he's a strong quarterback. He's a lot like the Bears quarterback, Jim McMahon. Very well built, does an awful lot of weightlifting. That, that was until he got injured with his shoulders, but a very, very strong quarterback. So on fourth down and about seven, back to kick is Belli. He is both the place kicker and the punter, but when he kicks, it'll be in the second quarter because we have finished the first quarter of play. It is 10-0, Jim Sweeney, Fresno State on top here at their home field. Did you know most wine coolers have more calories a bottle than a glazed donut? A California cooler has more calories than a slice of Boston cream pie. And Bartles and James has more calories than a stack of buckwheat pancakes. But Dewey Stevens Premium Light is light, with a clean, fresh taste and a third less calories. About the same as the average granola bar. So you decide, one of those heavyweights or Dewey Stevens Premium Light. Jeep Cherokee has just been reborn. It can now be ordered with a 4-liter, 6-cylinder, 173-horsepower engine. Nothing in Cherokee's class even comes close. In fact, with this engine and a choice of two or four doors and two shift-on-the-fly four-wheel drive systems, you could say nothing's in Cherokee's class. It's been a long day, Walter. But I know you still got something left. Yeah, you've got energy from 100% whole wheat. Wheaties energy. Hey there, Walter. Turn it on. We get you keep it.
At lunchtime, I said to myself, Self, do I want a McDLT or a Whopper from Burger King? The McDLT is fried, so it tastes like a fried burger. The Whopper is plain brought to taste more like a backyard barbecue. And while they'd rather serve the McDLT their way, I can get a Whopper fixed my way. So, after weighing both sides of the issue, guess where I took myself? This is a Burger King telling me how burgers should be. We get ready for the second quarter here in Bulldog Stadium, Fresno, California. I'm John Sanders with Gene Washington. 10 nothing. the Bulldogs lead. Belli back to deep to receiver Calhoun, and that's number 16, Tyrone Pope, back there with some support. It's a short kick. See which way the bounce goes. Back out to about the 37-yard line, and that's where... The Titans of Cal State Fullerton will have it. Let's take the first quarter stats and see what it looks like when you add up all the numbers from the first 15 minutes of play. Obviously, on the scoreboard, it's 10 nothing. but here are some more numbers. Well, you know, when you look at the time of possession, which is usually an indication of which team is playing best, the advantage is with Fullerton. Fresno, only 4 minutes and 20 seconds, but you have to remember where they started from when they got the football. They had great field position. Fullerton has started to change this now. They are getting the best of the field position here in the last few minutes. Well, all of their yardage came on that last drive in the first quarter that wound up in a field goal attempt that was blocked. Barber looking to his wide receivers. Incomplete, intended for Gibbs, number 24, at about the 48-yard line. He was knocked down by Fred Wilbur, number 8. And you can see Barber shaking his head. I'm not sure whether White ran the wrong pattern or whether Gibbs did, but it did not work out the way he wanted it. I think it was a case of good pass coverage by the Bulldogs. You know, this, this Fullerton team, in spite of their record, they really have never quit on their coach, Gene Murphy. And you have to give them an awful lot of credit. Here's, they went down at a field goal block. Let's see how they respond now. Can they keep that same enthusiasm going that they had in the last offensive drive? Dylan White, the wide receiver, to the bottom of the screen. Out of the eye formation. Calhoun. Stacked up. That is hip. Mark Olson, number 59, the first man there. Mark, a senior from Santa Barbara. Transferred from Santa Barbara, Juco. A lot of junior college players. Used to be that about... 70% of the Bulldog players came from junior colleges for Coach Jim Sweeney. He's changed a little bit now. It's about 50-50. It'll be third down and 10. No gain on the play. Gibson White to the bottom of the screen. Barber looks that way as he rolls right. Back up back the other way intended for Hood, and Hood had been knocked down. Hood was on the ground. No chance at all for Mark Hood that time. It'll be fourth down. The way uh, Fresno reacted on defense, I think that's a play that they had seen on the scout field a number of times because they just flooded that area with defenders, and Fullerton really had no chance at all. Stephen Baker is deep. He's standing right now just inside his own 30. He'll back up a little bit because Jim Saroy's done a good job of kicking so far. He's been driving him back. His second kick brought his average down because it took a bad bounce. It came back the other way against Cal State Fullerton. 13.59 left, first half. The Titans will kick it away. And Baker will try to track this one down. They kick away from him and kick out of bounds. Ball bouncing inside the 30. It'll be dead there with 13.50 left to play in the first half. So far, Fresno State has things their way. Cal State Fullerton in the doghouse. Smile. You just drop the film in. It almost slows itself. Then aim and shoot. Have you ever seen a shirt for a baby picture? I have. It's a great shot. Nothing to it. The pure, natural beauty of glass comes only from the purest sand. One of the few inexhaustible natural resources. And glass can be recycled again and again to bring you more and more of the good things that come in glass. 
just as their maker intended. Brought to you by the people who make glass containers naturally. Let us take you back in time just a little bit. This is Gene Washington, WR, it says wide receiver, and he was as good a wide receiver as ever played the game in the NFL. He led the NFL in receiving yardage back in 1970, touchdown catches in 72 when he had 12, went to the Pro Bowl four times. Obviously, as you look back at these pictures, what he didn't do very often was go to the barber because he changed his hairstyle a little bit. <laughs> oh my. You guys sneaked that one in on me. Look at the stats, though. Nine years with the 49ers. A great career in Gene. It's a delight for us here at ESPN to have you with us this year. And we're certainly enjoying it. I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> oh, well, I'll tell you what. I, I didn't remember my hair being quite that long. <laughs> And when you had a quarterback like John Brody throw into you, you needed everything you could muster together to try to get downfield. So we use it as a wind foil, I think. All right. First down and 10. Ball at the 29-yard line. The flag goes down. Did they take too long? They leave a formation. Anyway, the flag went before the play. Legal procedure called immediately, so let's back it up five yards. It'll be first and 15, but the ball will go back to the 24-yard line. See, inside the 25, spotted at the 24. Brian Fallon is now the center. Illegal procedure on guard. Still first down. Along with Brian Kazarian right now. With a come at tackle. Jeff Skidmore playing tackle. Paul Flute, number 17, has been the tight end most of the time. That's Flute. He changes the strong side of the field to the bottom of the screen. Backs are split, and they go inside. Mostly trying to get outside, and he's stacked up as he gets near the 25. The tackle was made by Mark Chisholm. Let's go back down now to the sideline and see if we can get the play call. A gain of two. We got flick, split left. Rebel left hot. 393 angle. 393 angle, that would indicate a passing play. Not surprising. Second down, long yard. About 13 to go. Sweeney looking left. Now throws short. Mosley can't hang on. It's incomplete right over the middle. Right on top of him was Jeff Hip, number 59. The angle pattern was called for the running back as we watch from the end zone, number 33, Mosley. He goes out. Now he angled back to the center of the field. The ball is a little high, and he tips it, and Fullerton nearly comes up with an interception, which would have been a great play for them because they would have had outstanding field position. Sweeney is throwing the ball a little high. That could be a side effect of the fact that his shoulder has been bothering him for the last three weeks. Third and 13, they go out of the shotgun. They run out of the shotgun. Williams across the 30, near the 32, before he's dropped on the play. Bill Bryan, number 88, linebacker who's had a problem with his shoulder, makes the tackle. Williams will leave, and the kicking team is on. That's Belli. Fresno rushing out with their kicking team, trying to catch Fullerton napping a little bit, but they get their people on the field and off. They've done a good job of playing defense in the last several minutes. A poor punt. Another short kick by Belli, and it takes a reverse bounce, rolling near the 40 before it run out of bounds. So great field position coming up for the Titans of Cal State Fullerton. The punt only eight yards. Let's see if the Titans can take advantage when we come back. We're not a company, but outstanding people come to us every day. People who want to make a contribution to a team and do work that really counts. People eager to see new places, do the unusual, and find the unusual. People who become your friends for life. People just like you. We're not a company. We're your country. We're the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines, the Army. We're the Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. Fact. Without money, many of the best things in life are unattainable. Fact. You insure to protect. You invest to grow. When you're not sure where to invest, knowing about Kemper helps. Ask a securities broker about the investment products of Kemper Financial Services. Mutual funds, money market funds, unit trusts, life insurance and annuities, real estate. Kemper Financial Services, a concern for your future. Heisman Trophy candidate D.J. Dozier leads Topkin ranked Penn State against West Virginia Saturday night at 7.30 Eastern, live on ESPN. 
Barry Belli, the punter, does not get a good snap from center. You can see the ball is low. Maybe that's one reason he didn't get off a very good punt. Not very good at all. It was only about eight or nine yards. Belli is the only player ever at Fresno that can be winning the lot with both money and field goal kicking. A few more like this, though, and he may be relegated to just field goal kicking. The ball at the 40-yard line. An excellent opportunity now for the Titans to get back in the game. 12.33 to play first half. I'm John Sanders, along with Gene Washington. It is 10 to nothing. And the Titans have excellent field position. Barber, the quarterback. Pierce and Hood are the running back. Calhoun not in there right now. And Ronnie Barber is going to put it up on first down. Goes deep down the middle. The pass is incomplete. Michael Stewart right there on the coverage. It was intended for Tracy Pierce out of the backfield. Pierce came out and went deep. But Michael Stewart was right in his lap all the way down the sideline. That'll be second down. Then. If anything, they could have called offensive pad interference. Stewart was in great position. The receiver really ran up his back. But I guess they say no foul, no harm. The Titans come out again. But the important thing is that they have a good field position as Barber surveys the defensive alignment. Now, who's now back in there? And shift into the eye formation. Running to the strong side, behind the tight end, Calhoun. Spins his way down to the 34-yard line. Webster and Williamson team up to make the tackle, number 28 and number 19. One of the reasons that Rick Calhoun was able to make this run is number 45, Dave Grayson, who's an outstanding athlete. There's a the block from Todd White. He didn't see the receiver coming and got the blindside block. And that allowed Rick Calhoun to scoot up inside and pick up a nice game. But David Grayson on the other side is an outstanding linebacker. And I played against his dad for the Raiders. And he comes from good stop, believe me. Great defensive back for the Raiders. Calhoun now has 41 yards. He got six in this play. Looking for more here. He's got it. Spurts inside the 30-yard line down to about the 26. Fred Wilburn hit him there. But that's enough for a Titan first down. We mentioned at the beginning of the game that Rick Calhoun is one of only three players in the country to have gained over a thousand yards at this point in the season. From the end zone, you will see why. How many shots? At, there's one shot, there's two, there's three, four. Takes five guys to bring him down. He is tough. Tough player. Great running back. Keep in mind, he's only 5'8", 190 pounds. He's very stocky. You'll see more about him coming up in halftime. He's an interesting story, as are many of these young men. Barber down, down the middle. Just overthrown out of the reach of Mark Hill, number seven. Stewart and Wilburn defensively, but the pass was simply too tall for Hill. Second and ten now. They weren't far away, John, from a touchdown on that play. He had beaten the coverage. That ball had been, no oh, six inches shorter. You can see Barber just saying, if I just had six inches shorter, that would have been six points. He has completed just two of six. Situation. Screen of draw. Bill Brennan in the game. In the backfield, Calhoun is wrapped up and wrapped up quickly by Mike Walker, number 90. Walker not able to move him out of there, and he makes the play on Calhoun. So the loss on the play will go back to the 29. It'll be third and 12. Again, this uh, defensive unit leads the PCQA against the rush, only giving up 71 yards. So. They have uh, deserved that reputation by playing well, uh, in spite of the fact that Fullerton has done a good job rushing the ball the past few minutes. I don't think they will continue to be able to do this against this football defense. Dylan White, the wide receiver. Blitz! From the blitz, he gets the pass away. Calhoun has it, dancing down the sideline. Let's see exactly where they spot it. They're going to spot it back outside the 20 at the 21. So it'll be fourth down and another decision coming up for the Titans. Barber did a good job, John, on, on reading that bitch. Of course, it was tough to miss with that linebacker running right in his face, but the fact that he was able to backpedal and get the football away, not taking the sack, was a good job. So now they have a shot at another field goal. Coach Gene Murphy on the sidelines and fellas, let's not have this one blocked. Finley will put it down at the 29. That will make it a 39-yard field goal attempt. Barber gets it down. Stradley's kick is up. And he missed it to the right. No, oh, it is good. It got in. 
It looked like it was going to be wide right. The officials came out and said good. So at 10-33, the Titans finally take advantage of some good field position. They cut the lead. It's Fresno State 10, Fullerton State 3. My love for you is immeasurable. My respect for you remains. Your ageless and timeless lace and fineness, your beauty and your elegance. Your laps, your deep, a comedy, your symphony and a play. Your every love song ever written, honey, what do you see in me? You're in my heart, you're in my soul. Mercury for 1987, shaped to hold the road and to capture your heart. Mercury, the shape you want to be in. The last field goal attempt was missed because of a low snap. Again, a low snap, but Ronnie Barber feels this one like a good shortstop. Strandley boots it. Goes through for three points. And let's watch the reaction. Just barely. I'm not the only one that thought he might have missed. Let's check out Strandley. He's just, let me see how close is it. Congratulations from the quarterback, and thank you. <laughs> and Rich Sheriff, the other quarterback, is the young man who snaps. So back deep, there is Rich. He's the snapper, the long snapper. Often you see quarterbacks snapping the ball on long snaps. Not often. Either. Bradley to kick it off. Deep men are Smith and Skipper. It skips to Skipper. Skipper wrestled down near the 23-yard line. On the board on the field goal play, the Titans of Cal State Fullerton, they get the three points, seven plays, 40 yards. It took them a couple of minutes. Len Strandley, 39-yard field goal, and it is 10-3 with 10.48 to play in the first half. So far, defensively, you'd have to say that Fresno State certainly has not exploded the way they would like to. They've not really been able to move the football with their passing game. Ball at the 28, first and 10. Sweeney fakes to the tailback. Steps up in the pocket and fires the football on target. That's Baker. He's got a first down outside the 40-yard line. At the 41, it'll be first and 10. Let's go back down to the sideline again and pick up the call. There is Dave Telford. You will Jump be able to hear him when he gets the play from upstairs. You can see the plays being signaled in. We got, we got I left, tailback 70 draw. That's Rich Olson to his left, signaling in the plays. It's first and 10. Ball at the 41-yard line. Going to run out of the I formation, fake the pass, and give it to the tailback on a draw. Big hole for Williams. The cross midfield at the 45. He's still on his feet. Down to the 35 yard line. It was right there. Right call, huh, Gene? Right call at the right time. Obviously, Fullerton expecting the pass. Great call. Let's watch from the end zone. Dropping back the linebackers get out of position. James Williams runs through there, a truck can get through that hole. That's a situation where you call the right play at the right time. Sometimes it's being smart, but half the time it's just being lucky. But they'll take you the one. 23 yards on the play for Williams. He's got it again. More room inside the 30. Run out of bounds inside the 25-yard line. Very close to another first down. Jalatsev and Kazarian leading the blocking offensively, and they really are opening the holes right now. You can see Jalatsev come out, leading that sweep around the left side. Tyro Pope finally made the play defensively, but a good night for Williams. You know, you think that uh, Fresno is strictly a passing football team when you see the stats that Kevin Sweeney has, but you have to recognize the fact that they can run the football so well, and the fact that they can run the ball well sets up the play action pass. Taylor in motion. Here is Baker now on the same side of the field. They go oh. and send to the fullback. Goes into the big oh. hole. And the Bulldogs have lost the football. The Titans come up with it inside at their own nine yard line. So the defensive play, the ball kicked loose. And Mike Schaffel, number 41, made the recovery, but they got a break when Mosley lost the ball. 
Mosley has such a huge hole to the right side. I thought he was going to stay outside, comes back inside. Ball knocked away. This is the kind of thing that usually happens to Fullerton. They get down and score in range, turn the ball over. On this occasion, though, it happens to the Bulldogs. They come up with a huge turnover and an opportunity to now to bring the ball out of the shadow of their own end zone and again try to get some good field position and get back in the football game. Calhoun has 55 yards. He's at the tailback spot behind the Bulldog hood. Over the middle, Barber's pass. Almost intercepted Stewart chasing it down. It was intended for the tight end, Thornton. Let's check some of the defensive people that we have in the football game at the present time. Jethro Franklin has been doing the job up front most of the night. Ramsey, number 87, is in there. James Rivera, number 43, taking over right now for Cliff Hanneman at the rover back. There is Wilkerson. He's still in there defensively. Second down and 10, ball at the nine yard line. Hood across the 10 to maybe the 12 yard line. Not much there for Hood before he's dropped. Chris Reinhardt, number 60, made the tackle. Reinhardt, one of the linebackers. He's in there along with Brian. Here now, number 69. So some of the second team players in there right now. Number 69, Greer, inside linebacker, along with Chris Reinhardt. They stay in, they do their job, make the tackles. Fullerton is trying to widen those gaps though with their offensive line. They're trying to get some bigger splits, trying to find running room inside, and they do that by splitting those tackles out and the guards out. This is an audible. You can see that Barber is changing the play. Here's the line of scrimmage. Yes, he's under pressure, and they've got him back in the backfield once again. It is Greg Ramsey, number 87. Barber, no place to go that time, and those in red love it here in the doghouse. That's the fourth sack by Fresno State. I think what happened, John, is that Barber read the blitz. He saw the blitz coming, tried to change his play to get it out quickly to one of his right receivers, but number 87, Greg Ramsey, was there too quickly. Comes up with a big sack, and so has to put the ball away. And it's Jim Saroy to kick it away. Deep is Baker. They're going to have good field position. Almost to the back of the end zone. Nice kick. Baker will track it down at the 45. Starts left and comes right. He's got some room down the sideline. Baker finally drops inside the 20. The ball will be spotted near the 16-yard line. Great field position. Sheriff, who snaps the ball, makes the tackle on the play. But Baker, the touchdown maker, almost took it all here. Coach Sweeney told me before the game that Stephen Baker is the quickest receiver that he's had here. Now, that's really saying something when you consider that Henry Ellett, who's playing for the Rams, played here at Fresno. And as you watch him dancing along the sidelines, you that Coach Sweeney would make that kind of comparison. Awfully quick wide receiver and punt return. And the big gain on the play, 30 yards on the punt return. It's a 40-yard kick, but the net only 10. Let's go down to the quarterback, Mike, once again, and let's find out what will happen here. Well, that opened up, didn't it? 17. Split right or split left? We got split left, tight and right, 17, wide. It's a first down call. Ball at the 16-yard line. Sweeney straight back. The primary receiver is covered. He has to roll up. Throws on the run. And it's a touchdown. An unbelievable play as the ball kicked into the hands of Gene Taylor. Taylor not the intended receiver at all. The ball hit short, kicked in the air. And we have a flag down in the backfield, so it may be for not. Sweeney took a lot of time, went short. Here's the call, and erased the touchdown. <laughs> the fans don't like it. And I'm sure Coach Sweeney does not like it. Kevin Sweeney, I mentioned before on some of the pass plays, had been throwing the ball a little high. I would, am suspecting that's maybe because of the bruised shoulders. But as he rolls out to the left, throws the ball fairly short. Watch the ball. It will be a little high. Then it will ricochet. Ball is high. Ricochets right into Gene Taylor's hands. <laughs> and how does he no the trap? Ducks underneath and backs into the end zone for an apparent touchdown. But obviously called back because of the holding penalty. So the football will be brought back now. 
The original line of scrimmage, remember, was the 16. The ball has moved back now to the 24. Let's move it back another two yards. There we go. It'd be first and 20. Holding on the offense. Still first down. Kevin Sweeney, one of the things he's really noted for as being an extremely accurate passer. But anytime you sustain the type of injury he had where you really can't work out very much, throw a lot in practice, you're bound to get rusty. It's like a pitcher who gets too many days rest, if you will. So if he's a little off, that, that can be explained by the fact that he's been suffering from some injuries for the past couple of weeks. That's Steve Taylor in motion. Williams on the reverse. Baker has it. One man to beat at the 30 does that. Inside the point, down to the 15 yard line. So a little razzle dazzle from the Bulldogs. Well, number 82, Mark Chisholm. Watch number 82, Mark Chisholm. He's saying, okay, you're coming my way. I'm where I'm supposed to be doing my job. But, oh, where'd he go? <laughs> oh, that's embarrassing. And finally, it was Quentin Knight, the nose guard, who ran him down at the 15. Give him 11 on the play. It'll be second down and nine. Seven minutes, seven seconds remaining first half. 10-3. Fresno State with the lead and the football. Right now, Smith. And Taylor. To the near side. That is Smith in motion. Sweeney looking, looking. Throws right. Pass is complete on the far side to Williams. He's run out of bounds, spun out of bounds on the far side by Jeff Hip, number 59. We got down to a third down and short now. Let's go down to the quarterback mic and see what the call will be here. Dave Telford will fill us in. We got, we got zoom split left tight. 90, Bob Gio. Now John, if you can understand that, you're a better linguist than I am. Everybody in. Taylor in motion. Williams. It's going to be short. Williams did not get there. They ran it to the left side, all right. There was no place for Williams to go. They really stacked it up over there. Sean Foy, number 90, defensively in the right spot. But it's number 59, the inside linebacker, Jeff Hip, who actually puts the stop on the running back. He makes the play. He forces them to turn inside, and the pressure coming from the other way catches up with him, and Fullerton has stopped him. It'll be a fourth down and two coming up. The ball is at the eight. We have a timeout call. They are huddling on the sideline to make a decision with 6.27 left in the first half. They're searching. They're searching me. It's T. Heavy. Left. 40. Can we do it? They were balanced last time. They were balanced last time. And they're, they're going to go with the unbalanced line to the left. He heavy left. And they scored on short yardage on that play earlier. They have to pick up two for the first down to keep this drive alive. So they decide not to go for the field goal at 6.27 in the first half. Instead, they will try to pick up the short yardage. Coach Sweeney made it clear in no uncertain terms that he expects to uh, get this first down. Yes, they are very heavy left. Two yards to go for the first down. William diving. He'll be close, and I think he's going to be short. They had to get down to the six. That ball is going to be spotted closer to the seven yard line. Let's take another look. One of the things you, you try to do when you overload to the left is you try to get the defense to shift their personnel to the left. Then you come back to the weak side, figuring there'll be fewer people there. They don't get it. Bulletin holes, and they have the football first down. The Bulldogs don't make it with their heavy offense. They did not. That time they tried to go to some new people. Ron Sims leading the blocking. Williams not able to pick it up. Williams does have 75 yards rushing so far in the first half. We have a player down on the field. For Cal State. 
James Howard, number two defensive back, who obviously is okay, just got shaken up a little bit. So another chance for the Titans of Cal State Fullerton. They'll have the ball at their own seven-yard line, and Barber back in that huddle. They dodged the bullet there. Longest drive of the night for them came in the first quarter when started at their own nine. Well, they're missing a field goal, but they consumed a lot of time off the clock. It's 10-3. The Titans trail by a touchdown. Long way to go here. Great ahead running by Calhoun. There are flags all over the place. No gain on the play by Calhoun. I think that's going to be offsides against uh, Fresno, so Fullerton will take the penalty, I'm sure. Mike Walker, number 90, jumps offsides, can't get out of that neutral zone. The flag is thrown, and Fullerton gets five yards. So it'll be first and five, ball at the 12. Encroachment on the defense, still first down. David Grayson now out of the lineup. Wilkerson is in there. Also at those back. Walker and Ramsey playing the end right now. Hill and White, the wide receivers, they're both from the top of the screen. First and five. Calhoun powers his way across the 15 near the 16 yard line. Mark Hood, the fullback, leading the blocking. Ramsey made the tackle, number 87, and Hood will come off. There's Mark, senior from Long Beach, a junior college transfer. Lipping slightly as he comes off. Appears as though he may have twisted his ankle a bit. But John, this, this Fullerton team, we, we talked about it at the beginning of the game, the telecast, here's a team that's 2-7, and seven, but they're playing very good football. If you look at the way they're playing, you say there's no way this team could have lost the number of football games they've lost. 5.32 remaining in the first half. A seven-point difference here in Fresno, California. Attention hunters, fishermen, and hikers. Herb Bauer Sporting Goods proudly stocks a complete line of Timberland boots. Timberland boots are among the finest quality waterproof boots made. Timberlands are tough, long-lasting, and will insulate and protect your feet in sub-zero cold. See these fantastic boots at Herb Bowers. Timberlands, light, dry, and comfortable. Try them on today at Herb Bowers, your all-sports sports store. When you're looking for great food in special surroundings, you're looking for Julio's. When you're looking for good times with good friends, come to Julio's. For food prepared with a special flair, you've got it at Julio's. Before and after those Bulldogs play for drinks or dining, it's Julio's. And what about the flavor? Ah, the flavor. Here's where you're going to find the flavor. At Julio's Restaurant, just north of Shaw on Blackstone. Julio's. It is second down and one. Ten to three is our score. Still 5.32 left first half. This is John Sanders along with Gene Washington. Here's a team that never quits. They've been fighting hard all year long. Haven't gotten the results on the board at the end of the game, but nonetheless, they uh, have fought off a lot of adversity, numerous injuries, and uh, Gene Murphy is certainly proud of his group the way they've held in there. John, I, you know what I like in this situation? Second and short like this. Or watch this one because they have number a lot of Todd White at the tailback spot. Go for it. Go for the jet go. He's the man that makes things happen in their trick play. Like passing the football, which he will try to do. He'll go back for the quarterback. Barber drops the ball. Stewart was there on defense, but Barber simply did not catch the football. You had it. You had it exactly when you when you saw White in the ball game back there in that position. You know that he, as a matter of fact, being a former quarterback, that he can do a lot of things with the football. We've seen this play before in the pro ranks. Seattle Seahawks, they used it before. Throws it just a tad too far. Barber makes a great effort. He dives and nearly comes up with the football, but that's a little too much to ask for a quarterback to make that catch. That's why he's not a wide receiver. Third down and short. Get Calhoun back in there. The fullback is burned. Brennan and Thornton double tight in formation. Calhoun, I don't know that he got there. He was really ripped 
at the line of scrimmage. Cliff Hanneman, number 77, leading the defense surge, and they stuffed him right at the line of scrimmage. Well, Fullerton, when they want the tough yardage, they run behind the left side. 79, Ed Gillis, 63, Joe Florentine. But the Bulldogs, they come in. Olsen in the middle. Mark Olsen, number 59, he stands up the pack and pushes them back. And Rick Calhoun, I believe, comes up short. And Fullerton will have to punt the ball away. So Baker will be back at midfield. Jim Saroy on to do the kicking. Get the ball about his own goal line. Four kicks. So the 35 yard average. He's able to punt the ball very effectively so far tonight. It's a good kick by Saroy. Baker. Drifting back. Drops the ball. Scramble for it. It looks like Fresno State got it back. So a break for Fresno State. Baker could not hang on. And Mark Olson, number 59, recovered. So Mark all over the field, able to get back on special teams and make the recovery. Baker, I think, well, you can see that he really didn't follow the football down into his hands. He was guilty of not watching the ball all the way into your hands. When you catch a punt, it's the same way as catching a pass. Watch it all the way into your hands. He had his head looking up, the ball bounced on the ground. 429 left first half. Again, good field position for the Bulldogs. They've had things their way all night. Chris Dugan has shifted in motion. The tight end. They go to Williams, the tailback, and he's met right at the line of scrimmage. Leading the charge is Jeff Hitt. A great Jeff Hip. A great story is Jeff Hip. Jeff Hip, uh, very unfortunate situation in his life. His father, an air traffic controller, died not too long ago and had a tremendous effect on his life. Uh, he turned to alcohol, which didn't help his problem because he wound up being arrested a couple of times. He was in a situation where he was practicing, going to school, and then at night he was going to serve his time. But he has really straightened himself out, gotten his life turned around. This is a good example of what you can do when you stick with it. Sweeney scrambling will have to scramble out of bounds. No place to go that time for Kevin Sweeney. I think they've, they've called a holding penalty against Fresno. I think Ron McLean, number 96, was held on that play as he was trying to catch up with Sweeney. We'll get the call from the officials. The ball was inside the 45-yard line, or was outside the 45-yard line, rather, where they started, but this first one pushes it back. They've had great field position all night long, have the Bulldogs, have not really done much with it. Only 10 points to show for it. But John, again, I think we have to give credit to... Uh, the defense from Fullerton, they have played exceptional football. Again, much better than their record would indicate. That is Sean Foy, number 90, talking to the referee. Williams leaves the lineup now. Kelly Skipper, number 26, will be on. Let's go back to the sideline and see what they will go with offensively here. Yeah. <laughs> we got that word, didn't we? The holding call will take it back to the 35. It was holding against uh, the person being held anyway was Ron McLean, the defensive end, defensive tackle from Fullerton. Go back to about the 36-yard line. Second and a long way to go. The reverse action on the free flicker. He's open. Sweeney down the middle. The pass is dropped. The tight end dropped the ball. Chris Dugan dropped the ball. Stephen Baker was so wide open downfield. I'm not sure, though, that Kevin Sweeney saw him. If he did, maybe he felt that he was too far downfield. Here's a razzle-dazzle flea flicker. Get the ball back to the quarterback. Baker is all by himself downfield. Sweeney goes to the quarterback. The problem is he hits him right in the hands. It's the wrong place to throw it to a receiver. Don't throw it to his hands. Dugan dropped the ball. It's third down and 20. Sweeney firing this time. It's complete. Dean Taylor has it. Long completion to Taylor. He moves back down inside. Fullerton State Territory and picked up a critical first down on third and long. This is the type of pass that Kevin Sweeney has been known for throwing. Deep passes right on the money. Gene Taylor, number one, runs a deep route, breaks across the middle, and you notice when the ball came, he didn't have to jump, didn't leave his feet. The ball was thrown on the line, a bullet right into his chest. Great pass by Kevin Sweeney. On the 
draw play to go to the fullback Kelly Brooks. Number 32 Brooks and Skipper now the running backs as Mosley and James Williams get a little rest on this series, but nothing there. That fellow who's putting his chin strap on, number 59, inside linebacker Jeff Hip, shoots the gap and again comes up with a key tackle. He is playing very, very good football, as is this entire Fullerton defense. It is Hip, Brian, Foy, the linebackers, along with Chisholm, Knight, Green, Taylor, the men up front, Howard, Hill, Chapel, and Baker defensively in that secondary. Long sprint out this time by Sweeney. He'll go out of bounds and begin to run him out of bounds on the play with number 59, Jeff Hip. Hip all over the field. He'll spot the ball, still outside the 40 at the 41. Be third and ten. Ball at the 41. Let's get the call from the side. Hey, we got zoom. Sprint left. Tight right. 17 wide. This is what we call a corner pattern. The receiver, Baker's going to break to the post, look inside now, go back outside. Excellent thrown football. You see, he didn't have to jump, didn't have to leave his feet, the ball right on the money. You can only throw this pass if you have an exceptionally strong arm, and it helps to have a receiver like Stephen Baker out there running those routes. Well, the senior from Los Angeles picks up the first down at the 16-yard line. <laughs> Williams, the tailback. Tries to get outside at the 15, moves down near the 10 yard line. Excellent running that time by Williams. Excuse me, it was Skipper, not Williams. Skipper in there at the tailback spot. Skipper kept his feet and got down to the 10. Kelly Skipper from the end zone. Look at the blocks. Men on there, down. Blocked well. Good job by the Bulldogs. And Skipper jumps to the outside. He is a player who's built low to the ground, and he uses the fact that he has very, very strong legs. And Coach Sweeney says he is a low to bring down as evidence on that play. 10,011 to the exact to Kevin Sweeney. Another milestone as he marches after Doug Flutie. And again, it's the tailback skipper. Bounce down at the 10, no gain on that play. For Kelly Skipper trying to move down. As you see, the clock wind down inside a minute and a half left in the first half of play. Another decision coming up on third down. The announcement being made here that he has passed the 10,000 yard mark. They have a Boston College gold stripe painted that covers all the yardage of one Doug Flutie, all 10,579. They've also painted the line in red as Kevin Sweeney continues to chase that record. Big third down call here. He'll throw. Looks right. Now looks back over the middle. And the pass is incomplete. Intended for Paul Flug to tie it in. Mike Schaffel, number 41, was there defensively, and they'll bring on the kicking team. Flug was open, but Sweeney couldn't find him until it was a little too late. He tried to get it in there, and I think the reason that this, well, there it is. You can see Schaffel diving, knocks the ball away. Originally, I thought Flug had dropped it, but that was a very good defensive play by number 41, Mike Schaffel. Great effort. Prevents the touchdown. So inside the 40, Belli is very accurate. This one will be about a 27-yard attempt. Looks good. It's true. Belli has put three more on the board for the Bulldogs of Fresno State. They lead by 10. It's the new flight. Yes, sir. You can't miss it. Oh, sorry, this went mine. I knew it. Uh, no, I believe a luxury car isn't a luxury car if it looks like something else. Uh-oh, not mine. Lincoln Town Car, sir. Yeah. There's nothing like a Lincoln Town Car. Its luxury is unmistakable. It stands alone in styling and prestige. This year, as always, the Town Car is distinctively Lincoln, what a luxury car should be. You wouldn't listen. An investment firm is only as impressive as it is responsive. 
Good to go. So when interest rates fell, we looked for new ways for our clients to make money and developed unique opportunities like the Prudential Real Estate Investment Trust, a first of its kind in a way to take advantage of changing markets. While others may imitate it, we're busy surpassing it. If anyone can show you bold new thinking in the business of making money, close it. It's Prudential Beach, rock solid, market wise. The Hammer Western Open is the next event on the Dewey Stevens Tour. See the leading ladies shoot it out live Saturday on ESPN. Barry Belli with seven points in this game. Two field goals and an extra point is now tied. The all-time scoring record for the Bulldogs at Fresno State. He will kick off with 48 seconds left in the first half. Belli, the big difference in the game is two field goals. And then only one touchdown. It's 13 to three. A 10-point lead for the Bulldogs over the Titans. At the 10-yard line. Back out to about the 25. Now, with the football now at this point, and you're down with 44 seconds to go, Gene. We've seen razzle dazzle already. We would not be surprised to see him do almost anything in this situation. What do you think? Well, I think that. Uh, Fresno will certainly be looking for a big play. They'll play deep, prevent coverage. Uh, I think if Fullerton has any chance of all of breaking something, they might want to be conservative, try to do a screen or a draw, try to break a play that way. You don't want to throw the ball in the intermediate range and give Fresno a chance to take an interception and run it up to another score here just before the half. Here's some burns of the running backs. for Pierce, but he was out of bounds. Grayson was with him over there, but Tracy Pierce, number 20, had run himself right out of the play. 40 seconds left in the first half. It'll be second and 10. The ball is in the 26-yard line. Ronnie Barber, John, all the way at quarterback. Calhoun now back to the line. If they bring Pierce in in the passing situation... Dump it off to Burns to pull back. Wrapped up by Grayson, short of the 30-yard line. The ball at about the 29. Ramsey was there as well. They'll go quickly without a huddle now. 22 seconds on the clock. Third and seven. Barber straight back. That one is almost intercepted. Moving up quickly was number three, Byron Nichols. And Nichols was in the spot, Gene, where he could have danced in for six and come up with the football. Well, that's exactly the thing that I, that I was saying that they don't want to do as we take a look at the entire coverage. Number three, top of your screen, Byron Nichols jumps up there, nearly gets the interception, and he picked his ball off. He may have gone down the sideline for six, or at least certainly got far enough to give Fresno an opportunity for a field goal. Jim Roy coming for the sixth time tonight. Baker is deep. Only nine seconds remaining first half. It's 13-3. Fresno State leading and about to get the football back before halftime. Nice high kick this time. Baker back at his own 30. Starts right. No place to go as he's dragged down at the 25-yard line. Jeff Hip made the tackle. He's been all over the field in the first half. Anybody who expected a blowout by Fresno State, Gene, has certainly been surprised in the first half. Again, I think that you have to give credit to this Fullerton team. They've shown character all season long in spite of the fact that they've missed so many players with injuries and their record is really awful. They've hung in there and they've played this Fresno team very well in the first half. They can come out here in the second half, and I think they believe now. They say, hey, not only can we play these guys, but we have a chance to beat them. So Ronnie Barber and his teammates will head to the locker room. Halftime score 13-3. to We'll be back to Fresno State later. Right now, back to the studio and Larry Burnett. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, actually, a better game than we thought it was going to be. Fresno State getting a tough time from Cal State Fullerton. Bino Cook here with me at halftime. We're going to be coming back, taking a look ahead. Some of the key matchups this weekend in college football. And we'll also have a special feature on Rick Calhoun, the fine running back who's been watching. He's got quite a life off the field as well. We'll be doing that when our halftime report continues. So stay with us. <laughs> He's taking it to the leader. It's Gates Denser in front. Proud Truth is front and flip. Proud Truth on the outside. Gates Denser is game. Proud Truth ahead. Gates Denser goes through and runs and finishes. Proud Truth has won it. 
See seven championship races for $10 million on Breeders' Cup Day this Saturday. Master? Why, if I'm calculating. Isn't it dark in there? Not for my new Anilite Solar Calculator from Texas Instruments. You have a Texas Instrument? Texas! Texas Instruments Anilite Calculator. Unlike other solar calculators, it works in all modes. Anilite. Good and feel. The new line of Anilite Solar Calculators from Texas Instruments. Imagine the Prince of Darkness with a solar calculator. <laughs> Experience an incredible advance in Gillette shaving smoothness. Atra Plus. The Plus is the white luper smooth strip that releases lubricants as you shave. You never felt anything smoother. Atra Plus by Gillette. The essence of shaving. No one really knows how your skin got sensitive. But if it is, try the shave cream with more advanced lubricants than any other. New Gillette Foamy for sensitive skin. Back here at halftime in the ESPN studios, I'm Larry Burnett along with Bino Cook. Uh, we thought we had a pretty good uh, weekend of football last week. It shapes up to be a very good weekend of football once again this week. Top-ranked Miami back in action, and they could get really the, the first test in a long time is Oklahoma when they take on Florida State this week. Yeah, Florida State is a little banged up, Larry. Uh, the visiting team has won, has won every game since 1980. 1980, Florida State went to Miami and lost 10-9. to And then in the Orange Bowl, of Florida State lost 18 to 17. So the two-point play, one it did not work, and one it did work, cost them a perfect season. It should be a good game. One thing to remember about this: there will be a lot of Florida State fans at the Orange Bowl, probably 25, 30 thousand. So it won't be like a road game at LSU or Notre Dame. Florida State has a shot, but I don't think they would do it. All right, Miami has already beaten Florida. They have never beaten Florida and Florida State in the same season since 1981, so maybe the tradition and the odds against them this time. Yeah, but I still think they're going to win. <laughs> I still think they will win. It could be close, but they just have too much. All right, so the Canes looking to remain at number one and to remain undefeated. Number two uh, is uh, Penn State, in many people's mind, is number three on our poll. Uh, Penn State, though, an interesting team in that they are going in undefeated. A team that, if they remain undefeated, as Miami hopes to remain undefeated, could end up in an independent showdown for the national championship, possibly in the Florida Citrus Bowl, possibly in the Fiesta Bowl. We'll be talking more about that Saturday night in our halftime uh, report. But uh, right now we want to talk about Penn State because they are going into a game that they are expected to win over West Virginia University. And when you're West Virginia, you say, well, we've got to be thinking upset. It was two years ago, almost to the day. Penn State fans remember it as the beginning of the end for Lions that year. West Virginia fans remember it because the Mountaineers pulled off a major upset. They beat Penn State 17-14. to A field goal was the difference. And that game may have been the difference for Penn State in 1984. The Nittany Lions went 1-4 after that and finished the season at 6-5. and It's a sour memory which lingers still. We try to forget as much as possible. But when games like this and where exact situations going down there, you know, you try to remember and you try to think how you felt. Is when there was eight seconds left on the clock. Their fans ran on the field. You know, we didn't continue the game, and they were just running through us while we were on the field, just yelling and screaming in our faces. And when you remember that, you know, it takes nothing at all to get up for this game. They handed it to us that year, and it was a tough game for us. And they, they just drove the ball down our throats. So uh, definitely got something to prove down there again. They've been through it so many times before. They've gone about 47 or 48 years now without taking people too lightly. So I don't suppose they'll start now. But if Don Newland's troops are to make a game of it this year, they'll have to stop Penn State's offensive machine, which the Crimson Tide could not last Saturday. The Lions rolled up almost 400 yards in their biggest victory of the year. Joe Paterno knows that the Mountaineer defense, which starts eight underclassmen, has been a bright spot in an otherwise bleak two and five season. It's a very aggressive defense. They take a lot of chances. And you've got to be sound. You've got to have patience. You've got to have poise when you play them. 
but I think they've defensively they've been a, a, a good football team at times has played better than good. They just had an awful lot of pressure put on them because of the, the way they kicked the ball around. Yes, inconsistency has plagued the West Virginia offense all year. They have had some flashes of brilliance with junior quarterback Ben Reed at the helm. But the home cooking of Mountaineer Stadium at night on the tube is probably the best shot they have to affect the outcome of the game. They're fun people. I've always had a great deal of fun with the West Virginia crowds, and I, I, we're going to try to treat it the same way. They, they're not... Uh, <coughs> The gun scares the devil out of me. You know, like I didn't know, because if they blast that thing and I jump right out of my shoes, but, uh, I don't think it's going to be enough to respect them. And, of course, that's the gun Joe Paterno was talking about. By the way, the Mountaineer is kind of upset. The officials down at West Virginia say he can't shoot it off in the stands and he can't shoot it off in front of the opponent's bench. He says, hey, they come to see me as much as the game. Let me shoot it wherever I want to. He may need a live load to beat Penn State this week. They're going to need a whole bunch of cans. <laughs> There's no way they're going to beat Penn State. Uh, Penn State lost there two years ago, 17 to 14, and that was the first time West Virginia had defeated Penn State in 29 years. So it's unbelievable. I don't. This might be close. It might not be. But West Virginia has no shot against Penn State. Any chance at all that Penn State comes in riding the crest of the victory over Alabama and they're a bit off their game, knowing that West Virginia has not been that tough this year? Well, I, I, not with Paterno. I think Joe Paterno will have them ready. It could happen. Kids are still kids, but. Paterno will have him ready. That's the big difference. He won't let him get arrogant. Okay, we're looking at a big game also in the Big Ten this week as we've got Ohio State going against Iowa, number 18 against number 9 on our ESPN poll. A couple of teams that are shooting for the Rose Bowl, and it could end up being a three-way race if things turn out right. Yes, uh, the game is at Iowa. Last year, uh, Ohio State defeated Iowa, and Iowa came into Ohio State number one in the country. It was a very small upset. Then Michigan... Had beaten, had lost Iowa the week before. What put Iowa in the Rose Bowl, of course, besides beating Michigan, was the tie between Michigan and Illinois, and those two teams play this week. I think Iowa will win this game. Game is in Iowa City, so that's yeah, a big difference. That's a big. big difference there. And of course, Iowa, though, coming off what, a 27 20 victory over Northwestern. They had a tough time. You had a tough time, but they were looking ahead. They looking ahead. All right, we're looking ahead a little bit, too, to that game in the Pac-10. It's a good game, too. It's going to be played in Tempe, Arizona, with Washington going against Arizona State. Arizona State now 6-0-1 going in. Uh, Washington, no slouch either. Yeah, the tie with Arizona State was a surprise, 21-21 with Washington yep. State. Washington lost at USC, but it seems that they always lose at USC. If Washington wins this game, my guess is Washington will end up in the Rose Bowl. But if Arizona State wins, it probably means we definitely are going to have an Arizona team. Finally, every year those people buy their plane tickets and bus tickets to go to the Rose Bowl, and they knock each other off at the end of the year. So uh, this is a big one for Arizona State. I think Arizona State will probably win. And let's not forget when everybody else is knocking everybody else off, UCLA is still waiting there in the wings to come in and see. Yeah, if they but Larry, they have to go to Washington on November 15th, and I, I think it, if, if Washington wins this, they would get... Uh, get UCLA and Seattle won't beat them. And if Arizona State wins it, they'll probably uh, kind of glide their way in there if they can. When we come back, a special feature on one of the running backs you've been watching in the first half of our game. There's the score. Cal State Fullerton trailing by a score of 13-3 to at half. We'll be right back. At Domino's Pizza, we are so confident you will enjoy every bite of every slice of our pizza that we will replace it or refund your money if it doesn't meet your expectations. That's the Domino's Pizza quality guarantee. A guarantee you can really sink your teeth into. Domino's Pizza delivers quality, guaranteed. One call does it all. You know what drives us nuts about Fresno? Not the heat. And it's not the fog. It's, it's the radio stations. Check this out. <laughs> supposed to make a choice here? Finally, there's a station that plays nothing but classic rock. And Dean and Don are back, too. Please tell me we got the gig. Surprise! Watch out. Dean and Don's original breakfast club on Classic Rock 107.5. Well, you've had a chance to watch number 28 for Cal State Fullerton in the first half tonight. His name is Rick Calhoun, and he has rushed for 16 carries, 49 yards in the first half. He's already over 1,000 a, a yards for this season. He's a great running back. He's looking for a future in the uh, National Football League. He also has some obligations off the field, and Jim Gray has that report for us. 
Good. 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 Hey, be still. Be still, man. Why don't you be still? Why don't you be still? No cam will work for you. This kid runs a, a play from scrimmage. He's going to run 25 or 30 yards. He's laughing and smiling all the time. He just enjoys being around, and people enjoy being around him. <laughs> That's the way I am. I don't know. I just like having, just having fun. Just have fun on the field and off the field. That's the best way to play. You can't go in mad everywhere you go. <laughs> the Cal State Fullerton football team may be led by their seemingly always happy halfback, Rick Calhoun. Calhoun earns high marks for his football ability, but his career was in jeopardy when the only thing he'd learned from the chalkboard were his X's and O's. Now he's learned to study not only his playbooks, but also his textbooks. The one thing a lot of people don't realize, I guess, is the motivation a sport will do for them. Uh, for Rick, uh, he knew that if he didn't stay eligible, he would not be able to play football. I know I can do it. Let's go to class and all. And the classes, there was a lot of lecture classes, so there was like you just have notes and stuff. It was pretty, uh, it was hard because I had a lot of studying and I really didn't do the stuff that I wanted to do and I just had to stay home and study. When Rick decided to dedicate more time to his studies, he achieved as much success as he had had on the football field. And in case he doesn't make any All-America teams, there's a list he's already qualified for, the Dean's List. He has struggled. He's gone to summer school, and uh, the icing on the cake is the fact that last spring he, made, he did make the honor roll. So uh, he, he is a competitor, and he has a lot of dedication to the game of football and in the classroom. Be it on or off the field, Rick Calhoun is not your ordinary 22-year-old. During the week, he goes to school and plays football here at Fullerton. And on the weekends, he travels about an hour up the road to Riverside to be with his wife and four children. Well, that's a king. Who's a queen? Where's the queen at? Since Rick is away at school most of the time, his wife, Natila, raises the four girls. And one thing's very obvious. His young ladies are very happy when they finally get a chance to see their daddy. How many people is in the coming? How many people is in the pitch? Group? That's the first thing they do. Is mom, daddy come home this weekend? I say, yeah, he's coming home. Yeah, and they run around the house and daddy's coming home, daddy's coming home, and they're happy about it. And when he's not, then it's a different story. Everybody's mouth is stuck out, and mainly the third one. She really, when he gets on the bus to go back, she pitches a fit. In only 22 years, Rick has accomplished a great deal. It can be said that he's been very productive both on and off the field. But still, there are goals in life he'd like to achieve. Most importantly, he'd like to join former Titans Mark Collins of the New York Giants and Jane Pruitt of the Miami Dolphins in the NFL. I think my chance would be pretty good if I just keep doing what I'm doing now. I think I have a pretty good chance. Jim Gray, ESPN, Fullerton, California. Interesting story, and I think a lot of people don't realize. They think it's all fun and games for a lot of the kids in the college game, but there are several of them who have other obligations. Many of them married, have families. Oh, uh, I can know what he does for complimentary tickets since he get in trouble. <laughs> uh, after World War II, a lot of players who, who play college football were married. Uh, a couple of coaches did not like the idea of players being married. Johnny Vaught at Mississippi did not like it. He, uh, he permitted it after the war, but after that he said too many problems. But this is an interesting story. He definitely needs lots of complimentary tickets, and I presume he gets permission from the NCAA to get at least four or five. Well, let's hope so. He certainly uh, has a lot of things he has to take care of, and he does a pretty good job. But Rick Calhoun, we're going to be coming back on our halftime report, so stay with us. New 1987 BMWs are in at one of California's oldest BMW dealerships, Weber Motors. That means the 1986 BMWs are discounted and moving fast. Right now, drive a new 1986 325 for just $259 per month. The lowest financing rates in 10 years, the largest selection of 325s ever, than the 1987 lineup of new BMWs. It all adds up to savings, big savings for you now at Weber Motors on Abbey Avenue downtown. I'm Fresno. Just one day, does a hot dog dance. Between the schnitzel's got no nuts. You know what tops the rest. They're all here at Wiener Schnitzel. Hot dogs we've been doing best for 25 years. I could have gone anywhere that I want to. Wiener Schnitzel. Dog meal deal. Two chili dog bag of fries and a medium Pepsi, just one ninety nine.
All right, just to bring you up to date, this Saturday night we've got Penn State going against West Virginia University. Our coverage, of course, starts with the Mercury College football scoreboard at 7 o'clock and pregame at 7.30. Next Thursday night, again, a 9 o'clock Eastern start, we will have Fresno State going against the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Kevin Sweeney very well could break Doug Flutie's record next week. That's right, and when Doug Flutie established that record two years ago, Nobody thought it would be broken, and here it is two, week, two years later, and it probably will be broken. They are on top of it. Kevin Sweeney, we're going to be going back and checking out on him. We're going to Fresno now, where our score is 13-3, to Fresno State. Let's go back to our crew. Thank you very much, Larry, and welcome back once again to Bulldog Stadium in Fresno, California. I'm John Sanders, along with Gene Washington. A 10-point difference at halftime, 13-3. to A very interesting first half. I think probably a lot of people expected... Fresno State to come out, throwing the ball all over the place, move it up and down the field against the Titans of Cal State Fullerton. That has not happened. Well, I think you have to give an awful lot of credit to, to Fullerton. I think uh, Gene Murphy, what he wanted to do, he accomplished in the first half. And that's basically try to control the football on their side of the field, run the ball, and keep the ball away from Kevin Sweeney, not let him light up that scoreboard with points. Here, Ricky Calhoun is running the ball, doesn't gain a whole lot of yardage here, but they maintained possession of the football, and they had a decided advantage in the first half in terms of possession. On defense, they didn't give up the big play. That's the one thing they don't want to do. They didn't want Kevin Sweeney to break their back with a big pass play, particularly with the fast wide receivers that he has. Here he's rolling out looking for a receiver. Good coverage, can't find anybody, and just gets out of bounds. So they did the job on defense. They've done the job on offense. Now all they need to do is get the points on the board. Another big play on defense. Fourth and two from the seven-yard line. A great effort by the Fullerton defense. They stopped them right here, and they take over the football. And that was Williams who was stopped. He had a good first half, though. We look statistically the big totals offensively in difference, of course. Fresno State 201 yards. Fullerton State, when you take away the sacks and the loss there, only 80 yards. But you can still say that Cal State Fullerton did have a decided edge in the amount of time they had the football. Time of possession. You can see the decided advantage there, 18 minutes to 11. Although you have to look at the point that uh, Fresno did get the football, though, in the early part of the game in good field position, so they didn't need to go a long way to score. That's right. As a matter of fact, the only touchdown that we've had was a 36-yard drive for the only touchdown of the game. Let's talk about the second half now. What adjustments do you see? Well, I, I think that what Fullerton wants to do is to continue to do what they've done. They want to be close when the game comes down to being over, so they have a chance to win. I think the danger that Fresno faces is that if they get too anxious and they try to force things and get away from their game plan, and they might get the turnovers. 13-3 to is our halftime score. It's a 10-point lead for Fresno State over Cal State Fullerton. We'll be back with the second half kickoff. I never go running without my portable stereo headset. I have a battery-operated television and a battery-operated cassette player. It seems like I'm always running to the store for more batteries. <laughs> Gone are the days when just about the only things you needed batteries for were your kids' toys and the transistor radio. Today, we're in the midst of a battery boom, with more and more products becoming battery-operated, from portable TVs to self-warming socks. The average home today has at least nine battery-operated devices and buys about 28 batteries per year. In fact, statistics show that people buy batteries more often than they buy razor blades, headache remedies, and even shampoos. But while portable electronics fit our active lifestyle, there is a drawback. Constantly having to buy fresh batteries is costly, and that sparked an interest in reusable batteries. You can't just use an ordinary alkaline or carbon zinc battery and recharge it. You need a special battery made of nickel and cadmium the type that's used in cordless phones and minivacs. Rechargeable NICAD batteries come in all the same sizes as regular batteries. It's estimated that a single NICAD battery will last as long as at least 100 alkaline batteries. That's one of the reasons why 90% of the batteries used in space are rechargeable. Although recharging batteries is easy, General Electric is developing a new idea that will make it even easier for products like radio cassette players. Rather than taking the batteries out of a product and placing them in a charger, the power stick allows you to recharge the batteries inside the product itself. To be able to do this, the NICAD battery and the product had to be specially designed. The battery is recharged simply by plugging the unit into any regular outlet. Right now, the power stick can only be used in GE radio cassette players. But soon you will see it being used in battery-operated products made by other manufacturers. For Consumer Watch, I'm Jeffrey Lyons.
For more information, call the GE 24-hour toll-free number. Dean has already mentioned the good field position that Fresno State had. Let's look at the keys to their possessions. Plus yardage is blue, minus is red, and scoring drive is gold. And let's see where they had the football in the first half. Field goal on their first drive. Again, good field position. Touchdown on their second drive. Great field position. They only had to move 36 yards. Then the field position, not so good. A punt, another punt. And a fumble as they put on a good positive drive but came up with nothing. Failed on fourth down on their last possession there. And then they drove down to a field goal as the first half ended. So it, the three gold. All the yardage was positive as far as Coach Sweeney is concerned in the first half. Just not enough of it. Gene Murphy on the other side. Back to kick off is Len Strandley. Brock Smith and Kelly Skipper are the deep men. That's Brock Smith on the left. Kelly Skipper to the right. So Fresno State will have it as we begin the second half of play. A very short kick is taken at the 25-yard line. And back the other way comes the fullback, Anthony Mosley. And on the special teams, he was the definite short man. He got the ball at about the 25. It winds up at the 34. Pope made the tackle. So that is where Sweeney will have it as we begin the second half of play here at Bulldog Stadium. And offensively, let's set it up for you again. Sweeney will be the quarterback. Wide receivers, Baker and Taylor. And out of the backfield once again, Williams and Mosley. We'll set the rest up as we get a chance. Baker to Williams, Sweeney drops and rolls a little bit to his right. He's forced outside, throwing on the run. Downfield is complete. The pass is caught deep in territory by Paul Fluke, the tight end, but we have another flag on the play. All the way back at the 32-yard line, James Howard made the tackle. Sweeney took a lot of time, finally found his tight end. Kevin Sweeney made such a nifty move on the right sideline. Watch on the right sideline as he moves to the right looking for a receiver. That move right there that bought the time. There's was the able to get the pass away. There's a the flag comes down for the hit out of bounds. And it was Kelly Gogarty that put the late hit on him. So the football is down inside the 30 at a 28-yard line. The pass had already been delivered when the hit came. We'll await the official verdict. Forget the late hit. The ball is First 28. First foul against the defense. Penalty declined. First down. So a big gainer of 38 yards on that pass play. Baker to the bottom of the screen. Tight end blue, pushing over to the right side. Dean Taylor to the top of the screen. They go instead to Williams. The tailback big hole inside the 20 down to the 18-yard line. Bill Bryan made the tackle, but a big gain for Williams. At the beginning of the first half, the Fresno State Bulldogs started off in a, in a very big way. Picking up a lot of positive yardage. They've done the same thing here in the first half, starting off in good fashion. With an injured player down on the field, Bill Bryant. Bryant has had that shoulder problem. Did not know how much he'd be able to play tonight or how long he'd be able to go. He's been out there all the way, and now he's down. 57 and run. The ball is at the 19-yard line. It'll be second and one. If he leaves the lineup, then Williams would probably come on. At this point, Brian is still down. We've just begun the second half. We're helping Bill up. Sophomore from Altaloma, California. Bill will go off. Greg Williams, number 57, will take his spot. Kip is still out there along with Sean Foy. Kelly Cogarty is playing in. Rob McLean, Quentin Knight, the nose guard. The other linebacker, Mark Chisholm. Hill, Howard, Schaffel, Baker in that defensive secondary. Second down, short. Ball at the 19. Took the back, top loop, shifts over to the other side. The fullback Mosley for a first down and more. He's inside the 15 to the 13 yard line. Whittakum and Williams led the blocking that time. Ron McQueen made the tackle. 
I think the challenge that Fresno faces right at this point is a challenge within themselves. Can they move the ball down? Can they get some points on the board without turning it over, without fumbling the ball away or throwing an interception? They, they look good here just like they looked in the first half. The key is can they put points on the board? Boston Patterson, he has got his man. That is Baker. Not a touchdown maker on that play, but he's inside the 10 to the 8-yard line. Williams there on defense, number 57, but Baker was open that time. Kevin Sweeney expecting the zone coverage. He had his touchdown maker, Steven Baker, come across field. We watch the linebackers go into their drops. Baker will come across field, and he'll pull up right in the middle in between the zones and catches the Sweeney pass. He's second down, about five. Flying back in the lineup now. There will be a penalty on the offense. That was Flug moving over there. The tight end. That's uh, an example of what I was saying before. You know, they've done this. Fresno has come down. We'll listen for the call. The illegal procedure on the offense. They've moved the ball down in good fashion, but they, they're their own worst enemy in a lot of occasions. They'll get down, get a penalty, put them back in tough position where then they have to put the ball in the air. We'll listen for the call. Good ball. Ball start on the offense. Second down. So take away the five yards they just picked up and Coach Sweeney looking at second and ten now. John, this could be a, a situation where maybe Fresno, even though they don't want to, is taking this Fullerton team a little lightly and not playing with the kind of enthusiasm that they would ordinarily play if they were playing a tougher opponent or an opponent with a better record. Sweeney rolling far to his right. Now he comes all the way back the other way. Being chased by Brian. He's still got it. He's hit. He loves the ball. And Cal State Fullerton has come up with it. And there's the mistake. There's the turnover. Knight made the recovery. You saw Brian chasing on the play. Well, I guess I've been around football enough to, to sort of sense when this thing might be happening again. Fresno, their own worst enemy. Kevin Sweeney trying to make something happen. Maybe getting a little impatient, running around. Maybe should have gotten rid of the football. Trying to do too much. Cal State Fullerton comes up with a big, big turnover. They have the football, and they dodge the bullets. At their own 25-yard line, first and 10. Calhoun keeps his feet across the 30 to the 35-yard line is Rick Calhoun. Hesitated and kept right on going. Now they dropped on the play by Brian Greer. The one thing you can be sure of when you face a Fullerton team is that Rick Calhoun will give you 100% all game long. He just continues to come at you. And as a reminder, he's one of only three players in the country this year that has over 1,000 points, 1,000 yards at this point in the season. At the 35-yard line, he had enough for the first down. It'll be first and 10. 12-37 remaining in the third quarter. 13-3. The Bulldogs lead the Titans, but the Titans have the football. They got the break on the turnover, the fumble recovery. That's good, the pullback. Across the 40 to the 42-yard line. Right there on the tackle is Jethro Franklin, number 67. Mark Hood running to the left side of the line, and for good reason. That's where number 63, Joe Florentine, and number 75, Ed Gillis are. They're the best blockers for the Titans, and they do the job on this play, and they're doing the job against the number one rated run defense in the PC2A. Second and short. It's about two and a half, actually, to go. White and get both to the bottom of the screen. Barber gives instead to the fullback Hood, and he moves ahead for the first down as he gets across the 45 to the 46. Jethro Franklin again on the tackle, but that should be enough for another tight first down. John, I think that, uh, you know, we talked about the fact that Bulletin really wants to just stay close, I think, in this ball game. They want to be in a position where if something big happens, good for them, is Gene Murphy, the coach on the sideline. I'm sure he said to his players at halftime, let's just stay close because something can happen positive for us. Certainly enough things have happened negative for us all season long, and they've done the job. They haven't had the turnovers. Fresno has had the turnovers. Not much there for Hood, about a yard. Mike Walker, number 90, made the tackle. Also there is Anthony Nunn, number 96. Here you see Anthony, the junior from 
Los Palos, California. Gain of two. Second down, eight. Now White gives both to the top of the screen. The wide receivers, Barber straight back. Later pressure. And he has to hang on to the football. That was Brian Greer right on top of him. The middle linebacker coming on the play. You called it, Gene. The blitz was there, and Barber did not have enough time. Number 69, Brian Greer, inside linebacker, comes right up the middle. Ronnie Barber, the thing I like about Barber in this situation is that he was about to throw the football, but he thought the better of it. He said, let's not say to himself, I don't want to turn it over. Hold on to the football. We can't pick up the first down. We'll punt it away, but we won't give it to the Bulldogs at this point by turning it over, throwing the ball when I should not force it. Bulldogs, play. Bulldogs come up with their fifth sack. Flip again and draw this time. toward a first down marker, but he will not get there. He'll come up about three yards short. Webster is there along with Stewart for the defense. That time the quarterback draw, and they picked up most of the yardage, not quite enough. They come up about three short of a first down. John, one of the best calls that you can make when a team is coming on a blitz. You can see the linebackers come from Fresno is to pop something through there quick. Calhoun, who usually runs the ball, makes a great block for Ronnie Barber. Bounces through there on a quarterback draw and nearly picks up a first down. But the key here is that they have the football. They're punting it away. They'll back Fresno up into their own part of the football field. And to change, Webster. Rod Webster is deep. Not Stephen Baker. He gets the kick away. Webster comes up. Falls down at the 15, and that's it. There's a flag down. Flag down on the play. I think it's going to be roughing the kicker. But the reason, because the reason for roughing the kicker is a poor snap. I think we'll see if we get a chance to see it on a replay. There's a poor snap. Short hop now. Fresno says that we can block it. They missed the block. Once you miss the block, if you don't touch the football and you hit the kicker, it's a penalty. If you get a part of the football, you can knock the kicker to the ground. No penalty. But they missed the ball. Now Fullerton has the ball. Again, they have first down, and they're going to be starting from about the 42-43 yard line. Let's go to the first half possession of the Titans of Cal State Fullerton after the first. call. You hear it? First down. It is a first down. Now for their possessions. Here you go. Keep in mind the plus yardage in blue. Minus in red. They lost yardage there. Had the punt early on. Again. We will go back and pick it up. Right now, it's new life. First and ten. Ball at the 43-yard line. Quick pass. A little slant pattern down to the 30-yard line. Let's go back to those possessions. Wilburn on the tackle, but a good pickup of yardage that time by the Titans. Their longest drive resulted in a missed field goal. They ate up a lot of time and a lot of yardage. A punt there. And then the field goal drive. That was their scoring drive, and you can see they had good field position that time. But overall, Gene, terrible field position in the first half. Now it's at the 30, first and 10. On the sweet play, it's Calhoun outside of the 25 to 20. Calhoun inside the 20 down to here, the 17 yard line. Rick Calhoun again continuing to do an excellent job of running the football on the seat to the outside. Nice cut, bounces outside, gets around to Mike Stewart, picks up a nice gain, and continues to add to his impressive list of statistics so far this year rushing the football. That is still Ronnie Barber, but he's got a new jersey on. He has number 14 now. They continue to move the football at the 18 on an exceptional drive here as they go to the fullback hood. He powers his way inside the 15 yard line. Yeah. 
Hood. Mark Hood out of the fullback spot. Probably brought down by Brian Greer. It'll be spotted at the 14. A gain of four. It's second down and six. A good drive for the Titans. Gene, they really, you know, you, it just amazes me how this team has hung in there. Here's the team that's come in at, with this kind of a record, a two and seven record, and yet they're playing this very good Fresno team. Uh, they're playing them equally. I mean, I don't think the score really reflects the way the football game is gone. Barber checking off, changing the play. Back to play. Oh, great run! Still running down near the two-yard line is Calhoun. Now mark him out at the three-yard line. Webster forced him out. Hammond, number 62, leading the blocking. You can see the tight end Thornton there. They went to his side of the field. Calhoun closing in on another 100-yard game. We talked so much about the left side of the line for the Titans, but let's look at the right side. Number 62, Greg Hammond. Number 78, James Good. They make the blocks on the right side. Look at that block by Hammond. Terrific job of blocking on the lead block, and Calhoun does his job, and all of a sudden the Titans are about the three-yard line and threatening to come within three points. It is first and goal. They have two pullbacks in the line. If they go to Calhoun, the flag is down. I think, uh, I think Fresno jumped a little too early. I think they crossed that neutral zone. So things uh, certainly seem to be going the way of the Titans here. This drive started at their own 25-yard line. They were in the neutral zone. 7.24 to play third quarter. Take a look. From the sideline, you can't get across that neutral zone when the ball is snapped. They try to get back. Smart move by the center. And the quarterback called that snap signal, and they pick up a free, free yard or two. About a yard and a half just inside the two. It nudges. It'll be first down all over again. You can see that Tim Burns is in there at fullback. So we have two fullbacks, Burns and Hood in the lineup. Also two tight ends. Thornton and Brennan, this is power offense right here. Calhoun, boy, he banged right at the two-yard line. Surges back ahead for a yard or so. But he took a good lick initially by Anthony Nunn, number 96. Anthony Nunn gets under the offensive lineman, and he just shoots back in there. Calhoun has no place to run. Anthony Dunn does a super job. He just stands up that line of scrimmage and he pushes it back. Still second down, goal to goal. The ball is at the two. Thornton really needs a touchdown here. This would be a great boost. Burns trying to lead the blocking for Calhoun. He tries to work his way into the end zone. He's close. He does not get in. I tell you, you can't get much closer than that without scoring. It'll be third and goal. The ball just inches away. Walker kept him out of the end zone. Rick Calhoun, you will see on his second surge, he makes a surge, tries to get the football over the goal line, bounce in there, makes the surge. Oh, ball comes down on about the two-inch line. Two inch line. Very, very close. Maybe the quarterback can keep it himself. They really need the six points here. Forget about the field goal. Barber dives to the end. Yes, touchdown. They take it all the way. 75 yards for the touchdown. Barber gets it, and they are right back in the football game. John, that is an impressive, impressive drive because they did that against the number one rated defense in the league, number one against the rush, and they really just take it to them. Barber just taking the ball himself, keeping it, gets a good surge from his offensive lineman. We talked about the great job they've done on the left side, Florentine Gillis, the right side, Hammond, Benson in the middle. Terrific effort. I'm sure Gene Murphy feels very, very proud of his offensive group. They've done one whale of a job against a very good defensive Fresno State team. The kick is up and good, and that was Benson snapping that time instead of Rich Sheriff. 13-10 is a three-point difference here in Fresno. Who says you can't have old world taste and a new world waste? Old world aging and the new world's youthful spirit. Europe's finest hops in America's finest light beer. Make a load light, old world quality from Anheuser Busch. Make a load light. The best of both worlds. Make the load life, oh yes, you can have it all. Beer in 
recyclable glass bottles keeps its cool for a long, long time. And pure glass protects the taste of your beer. Enjoy it cold and true, knowing that the good things that come in glass come just as their maker intended. Brought to you by the people who make glass containers naturally. When you get to look at this play the way a free safety would look at it, the quarterback, Barber, keeps it, goes over for the touchdown, and all of a sudden, this football game is within three points. The Bulldogs lead it 13 to 10. Bulletin is really just where they want to be. They want to be close in this ball game to have a chance to win in a super job. There's a scoring drive, 14 plays, 75 yards, and they ate up seven minutes on the clock. And it was the quarterback, Ronnie Barber, who got it in the end zone. So to kick it off would be Len Strandley. Skipper is deep on the near side, along with Brock Smith on the far side. Five, if you want, left third quarter. Don't go away. It's 13 10. Great kick. Skipper driven back into the end zone. He finally gets a handle on it, and he will not come out. So Fresno State will have it at the 20. Their lead is down to three. The guys at Car and Driver are pretty impressed with the Mazda 323. They know what they're talking about. They say, and I quote, it conveys a feeling of structural integrity and heft that belies its small size, unquote. What they're saying is, it's a small road car. They also say, quote, it's one impressive machine, not only a solid driving package, but a solid value as well, unquote. I tell everybody it's the best small car I've ever driven. Of course, nobody ever quotes me. Smile. Just drop the film in. It almost loads itself. Then aim and shoot it. Have you ever seen a shadow baby picture? I have. Whichever one you want to choose, we've got the It's a great shot. Nothing to it. Pro Football Best Matchup. The NFL Game of the Week puts the hardest hitting action on ESPN every Friday night following Sports Center. We've got a good one here on our ESPN Thursday night college football. It's 13 to 10. The Bulldogs lead the Titans, and you'll see more of the Bulldogs next Thursday night right here on ESPN. It'll be UNLV in Las Vegas against Fresno State next Thursday night. Again, it's 9 o'clock Eastern time, 6 o'clock out here on the West Coast. So first and 10, that drive, the touchdown drive, started because of a turnover, was kept alive because of a roughing the kicker call. And back now come the Bulldogs at Fresno State. Sweeney missed his first three to 99 of 13 since then, and he is still firing. As he goes across the field, that's Baker. Baker has it, plenty of room as he moves it out to about the 37-yard line. His fifth catch of the night, and they're firing. Sweeney coming back and doing what he does best, throwing in between the zones, down in that medium range. Number 81, Stephen Baker is all by himself. I guess he trips up on the on the chalk mark, but he was wide open in between the zone, and Sweeney gets the ball there. Fullerton will need to get their linebackers deeper into the drop to stop that kind of escalation. 145 yards passing. He's over 10,000 in his career. Sweeney this time rolls left, looks downfield, he'll run. Across the 40, out of bounds near the 45-yard line for Kevin Sweeney. He's been able, under the times that he has been under pressure, to pick up yardage. It'll be a second down play, and let's go down to our microphone on the sideline to get the call. We got high left, slant tailback, 40 fans. It will be a running play. Ball just short of the 45. Second down, a long three. Williams, he does slam right, hesitates, and squirts his way out to midfield. The first down for Fresno State. A five-yard pickup on the play by James Williams. John Foy, number 90, made the tackle for the Titans of Fullerton State. And I think that uh, the pressure really is on. 
Fresno at this point because they, they're, they have to be saying to themselves, hey, you know, we move the football down and we're not getting the points on the board. We can't let this team uh, get much closer, fellas. Hey, we got to do something. I think they're beginning to sort of get a sense of that. And the coach is saying, hey, fellas, let's wake up. We got to win this football game. Sweeney fakes to Williams, rolls right. Going deep. The pass is complete to the tight end. He's inside the 25. Still riding his way close to the 20 is Chris Dugan, number 84. They will spot it at the 21 yard line. There's Dugan. Chris Dugan, he is the pass catching tight end, but this play really is made possible by two things the throwing ability of the quarterback, Sweeney, but the wide receiver cleared the defense out, took the defensive back away. You can't even see him in your picture. That allowed the tight end to come across and really have that part of the field all to himself. Number 84, Chris Dugan. Good job. Nice reception and a good throw from the quarterback, Sweeney. 29 yards on that pass play. Sweeney closing in on a 200 yard game. He's had three in a row against Dallas State Fullerton. Goes to the near side. Taylor has it inside the 10 yard line. He'll be spotted at the 8. It's another first down for Fresno State. John, do you get the sense that the Bulldogs have turned up the intensity level a bit? Another milestone for Kevin Sweeney as he continues to climb the ladder in total offense and in passing offense. He is chasing and passing offense Doug Flutie. Of course, Doug Flutie also in total offense. But he has been moving steadily up the ladder as the year has gone along. The ball now spotted at the 10, not the 8-yard line. Still enough for a first down as he picks up 11 on that play. It'll be first and 10 at the 10, and the ball is exactly at the 10. So Kevin Sweeney's going to have to get it in the end zone. 4.41 to play third quarter. It's almost like the touchdown was a wake-up call for this offensive unit. Well, again, like I say, they turned up the level of intensity. Uh, you can see the coach Sweeney on the sideline, and he's saying, well, okay, fellas, uh, let, let's get the job done here. Let's get the, get the football in the end zone. Now, they've been here before, but they turned it over. Williams is hit behind the line of scrimmage, keeps his feet for a couple of yards. He was hit hard in the backfield by Jeff Kipp, kept his feet, and picked up two. Good job of gang tackling by the Titans. Tough hitting. They're making the Bulldogs earn their yardage down here. And I'm really just I'm not quite amazed, but I just have to give so much credit to the way this Fullerton team has really hung in there. They're playing an excellent game of football, and uh, you have to think that they're outmanned, but uh, they're playing their hearts out much better than their record would indicate. Baker and Taylor, the wide receivers. Sweeney rolling left. He'll turn it upfield. Down to the six-yard line. He's run out of bounds right there. At the six, Sean Foy. Flings him out of bounds. 3.50 left, third quarter. The clock stopped. It'll be third and goal. John, I think on a play like that, as we watch Sweeney go back to the huddle, gives you an idea of just how tough this quarterback is. Bruised shoulders, coming back from injuries, not being able to throw the ball as effectively as he could, but yet he doesn't shy away. Tough, tough quarterback. Let's pick up the call. We got I right tight, fake tailback counter at seven, waggle at eight. That should be 0 24, 0 25. 0 25. Quarterback is going to fake the handoff and look like, I think, if waggle means what it meant when I was playing, that means like a sort of a bootleg play. There's the fake to the tailback. He rolls right, looking for Taylor. Now he's jammed up and has to go back out. Oh, dropped at the 18 yard line. Great play. Great defensive play by Ron McLean, number 96. This is a super effort by Ron McLean. Fake the ball to the tailback. Sweeney's rolling out. Watch number 96 fights off the block and makes a shoestring tackle on Sweeney. That is a super effort. Two things happened there. One, he kept him from being able to throw the ball because he clogged it up. He could not see anything. Then he still made the tackle at the same time. So on to try his third field goal of the night. Is Barry... Belli. He has hit two so far this evening. This one will be a 35-yard attempt. No block! So the Titans again get the turnover. Howard got the block. He comes up with the football, and Cal State Fullerton has it back exactly three minutes remaining in the third quarter. James Howard, number two, comes up with a big block on an attempted field goal here. Belli is looking up to see if it's going to go through, but the ball is on the ground. And again, Fullerton, they dodge a bullet, left side of your screen, comes in, great timing, 
blocks the attempted field goal, and Fullerton is within three points. Three minutes left in the third quarter. We are still with you. Good carries on first down, picks up three. So the Titans have gotten a turnover here in this third quarter. They have blocked the field goal. They got a break on a roughing the kicker call that's kept their touchdown drive alive. Let's see what they can do now. Hill and White, both wide receivers, come to the bottom of the screen. A run out of the I formation. spinning for about a yard, and that's it. Not much there at all. Mark Olson, number 59, with a lot of help from the men up front. Wilkerson, Walker, Franklin, Nunn, Greer, Rivera, Ronald Wilburn, Stewart, Nichols in that defensive backfield, along with Webster. This is, this is that classic confrontation. Here you have an underdog team, Fullerton, all of a sudden they're full of life, full of confidence. They block field goal attempts. That's what they think. Now you have the number one rated defense. They're saying, hey, maybe we have to take control of this football game. Great confrontation. Number one defense, upstart, confident offensive team for the Titans. Third down five. Barber's quick pass is complete. And his white spins away and spins ahead at the 40 for the first down. Nichols and Stewart made the tackle, but Todd White, number 21, he's the gimmick man, the gadget player for this team. He picks up a first down. Ronnie Barber is a very heady quarterback. He seems to be aware of everything happening. We watch the Fresno linebackers blitz. Quarterback reads it, throws to his receiver coming to the inside, and Todd White picks up the first down. Great job of recognition by the quarterback. Super job of recognition. The ball just short of the 40-yard line. It'll be first and 10. They pick up almost 10 on that pass play. Calhoun outside at the 40. To the 45 at the 46-yard line before he's forced out by Byron Nichols. Picked up a good, strong six yards on the play. And Calhoun, again, closing in on another 100-yard game at 5'9", 105, 8, rather, 190 pounds. Let's talk about the size of Calhoun and also Sweeney. If you're an NFL scout, as there are some at the game tonight, what do you think? Well, first of all, with Sweeney, I don't think there's any problem in terms of uh, his ability to play, play pro football because of his size. He's about six feet, but he's very well put together. He's a real strong player. I don't think there's any problem at all with him. Barber with a lot of time now. Goes away. Great block. Throwing deep for White over throw just a little bit too long. That was Byron Nichols with him. I thought he might run, Gene, when he got around the corner because it looked like he had about 10 yards with no red shirts in sight. Well, Barber isn't the fleetest of foot, so I think we saw an opportunity to throw the ball to White. He unloaded it. White was open, but the ball was thrown just a tad too far. But the, the thing about the way they're playing is that they're playing really very confident football on offense. I mean, these guys are playing like they're 7-2 as, as opposed to being the other way around. Uh, we've seen them play before. We've seen them shoot themselves in the foot before, but tonight it's a totally different story. White and Hill, the wide receiver. Back to split. Straight back is Barber. Throws short. Calhoun's got it. Penalty, flag down. The pass complete to Calhoun. None on the tackle. He's got enough for a first down, and there may be some more tacked on. I think uh, Fred Wilbur, number eight, uh, I think he took out a little bit of frustration on Rick Calhoun on the sideline. The official threw the flag there. We see Fred Wilbur go to the sideline, and I think his coach is going to remind him uh, that uh, he did the wrong thing. Well, the gain on the play is about nine yards. You can tack on another 15, and that will move it all the way down to the 30-yard line, just inside the 30. Good ball. Personal foul on the defense. First down. Let's see what you think as we go back and look at what happened with Wilburn and Calhoun. Calhoun close to the sideline, number eight. Well, oh, boy. You know, as we watch this replay, that really doesn't look like a bad play at all because when Wilburn actually hits Calhoun, he still has a foot in bounds. Barber with a fake. 
He's open. Nichols on the coverage, but White had a step and almost made the catch for a score. Had this ball been thrown to the inside another foot, it would have been six points. As a receiver, I can tell you this is the most difficult catch in all of football. When you're running downfield and you have to turn and look directly over your head, it's tough to catch the flight of the football. Had it been inside another six inches, this would have been six points. That is the toughest catch for a receiver to make in all of football, coming directly over your head. Second down, 10, ball at the 30. 48 seconds remaining third quarter. It's been all Cal State Fullerton here in the third quarter. They've gotten the breaks, and they've taken advantage of it. Stepping up and firing as Barber loose football is on the ground, but the play had been blown dead. It was completed that time. Grayson on the tackle. That was John Smith, number 89, the tight end who made the catch. Got it to the 25, gain of five. It's third and five now. So a big down in this series, and with 26 seconds, we have a player down. Olsen is down. 26 seconds left, third quarter. The Titans trying to take the lead. Investors Thrift, serving the Valley since 1937, now brings you the IT Advantage. Auto loans tailored for you with 100% financing, up to 84 months to repay, competitive rates, and fast one-day service. Investors Thrift also offers the IT voucher that pre-qualifies you for the auto loan amount you want. Whether you buy or lease, Investors Thrift gives you the advantage. Investors Thrift on Shaw near First in Fresno. I'm John Party. Let me show you my greenhouse restaurant. My experienced kitchen staff will prepare exquisite dishes sure to please you. They can also prepare anything from a party tray to a full sit-down dinner through my greenhouse catering service. Sit back in a spacious dining room while my staff of courteous and responsive servers cater to your every need. Relax in a friendly and uplifting lounge featuring live and piped-in music. I began in Fresno and I know what Fresno enjoys. You'll find it at my greenhouse restaurant. Fresno State leading by a field goal. 26 seconds left in the third quarter. I'm John Sanders with Gene Washington, and this is trouble time for the Bulldogs because Ronnie Barber and the Titans, as they huddle with their head coach, they have moved the football. They got it on a blocked field goal. Their first scoring drive was set up by a turnover, a fumble, and then a roughing the kicker call kept that drive going. That's the lead 13 to 10, and they're knocking at the door again. And they're doing it against a very good defensive ball club, but I think a defensive ball club that has had its confidence shaken here in this game. This is certainly one of the key plays in the game. If they can convert, convert this third down play, they are certainly within scoring range. Barber will throw on third down for Gibbs. Up in the air, can't hang on. Fred Wilburn, number eight, was with him. John Gibbs went high, but could not come down with the football fourth down play coming up. Gibbs has a chance to make this reception. Right on the bottom of your screen, the right-hand side, he sees the ball is under thrown. He goes up. He actually gets his hands on it, but he can't come down with it. It would have been an outstanding reception, but he jumped well. Watch again. He jumps up. He has his hands on the football there and goes right through his hand. A 42-yard field goal attempt is coming up. Is it going to be long enough? It is, and the game is tied. It did not look like it was going to get there on a spinning sideways, but it made it. 13-13 with 17 seconds left in the third quarter. What an effort by the Titans. They've climbed back with 10 points here in the quarter to tie it up. When Mazda asked me if I'd like to take some hot laps in one of their RX-7 race cars, they didn't have to ask twice. Whew, I'm telling you, nothing pours out power as smoothly as a rotary engine. It makes for a great race car and a great sports car. This RX-7 also has one of the most advanced suspension systems in the world. It loves to be driven hard. Check it out. But don't blame me if you start hating what you're driving now. Want to think it out again, Mr. Garner? Like I said, you don't have to ask me twice. Runny nose, watery eyes, congestion, and a headache. When you've got all these sinus symptoms all together, you've got sinus complex. And that's too complex a problem for most cold or sinus remedies. 
You need maximum strength sinus tablet, specially developed to relieve all the symptoms of sinus complex. Sinutab. You'll feel altogether better. And take new Sinutab nighttime at night to feel altogether better in the morning. Sports Center Sunday previews the day's most important NFL matchups and reviews the most exciting sports highlights of the week. Sunday morning on ESPN. Coach Jim Sweeney's 10-point halftime lead is gone. 17 seconds short of finishing three quarters. It is dead even at 13-13, much to the delight of Coach Gene Murphy. So back we come once again. Strandley, who kicked the 42-yard field goal, is second tonight. night. will kick it off to Brock Smith and Kelly Skipper. Smith will take it at the 8-yard line. A little bit of a hole. Oh. He runs through in midfield. Across the 40, cuts it back. He's got a chance. At the 40, can they track him down? Yes, inside the 30-yard line. Todd Brukup made the tackle, the touchdown-saving tackle, and right back up the Bulldogs. Well, the Bulldogs didn't get where they are by folding up 10 when times get tough. Number two, Brock Smith breaks to the inside, and what a great move as he gets back to the outside and turns on the speed. The problem is Fullerton has the angle, and that's the only thing that prevents a touchdown, is that they had a good angle on him. Brock Smith. 64 yards for Brock Smith. Gives his offense the ball at the 28-yard line, first and 10. Sweeney's hit six passes in a row now. Goes to Williams, the tailback. Williams at the 25-yard line, a gain of three. John Foy made the tackle. That is the end of three quarters of play. We're dead even 13-13, the final 15. Hang up. I always thought the Mazda SE5 was too good a deal to pass up, but catch this. Now Mazda's throwing in a bed liner, mud guards, sliding rear window, floor mats, even an AM FM stereo at no extra charge, on top of all the stuff SC5 already comes with. Deals like this SE5 Plus 5 don't come down the pike every day, and they sure don't last forever. But I guarantee you, somebody's going to miss out on it and come crying to me after it's over. Mike, sorry to bother you at home. So why am I always the lucky one? Hey, that's what you get for being so good. Yeah, right. Listen, uh, we got problems with the West Coast deal. Big problems? Big problems. We really need you here. I've checked the schedule. An American has flights in the morning at 7, 8, and 9. Fine. Have everything ready and plenty of hot coffee. I'll be on the 9 o'clock flight. Terrific. Tonight. When you're something special, people know it. Experience an incredible advance in Gillette shaving smoothness. Atra Plus. The Plus is the white lubricant strip that releases lubricants as you shave. You never felt anything smoother. Atra Plus by Gillette. The essence of shaving. No one really knows how your skin got sensitive. But if it is, try the shave cream with more advanced lubricants than any other. New Gillette Foamy for sensitive skin. Hamburger places may be good at making hamburgers, but when they try to make chicken, it doesn't always fly. That's why I count on the chicken experts, Kentucky Fried Chicken. The Colonel's secret recipe makes their chicken tender, juicy, and downright delicious. Things are looking good. At Kentucky Fried Chicken, all we do is chicken, so we do it right. Both burger places are only fooling themselves. Kentucky Fried Chicken, we do chicken right. Things are getting very scary for Fresno State on Devil's Night. It's almost Halloween here in California. 13-13 is the score. There is Sweeney. He's got good field position. The ball at the 25. It'll be second down seven as we start the fourth quarter of play. I'm John Sanders, along with Gene Washington. Williams. First down. He cuts it inside the 15-yard line. Run out of bounds near the 12 by Sean Foy. The last up leading the blocking along with the fullback Mosley. A big pickup. Let's check out the third quarter stats in this game and see how the two teams do in terms of numbers. Well, again, you can see the time of possession. Fullerton, a decided advantage. They're controlling the football, and that's what they wanted to do. First down. 
play. The ball at the 12. Williams, big hole. He's inside the 10 to the 8-yard line. John Foy, number 90, made the tackle. And Paul Fortizzi leading the blocking long in there with Mike Savage, Brian Fallen, Mike Chalatza, and Mike Withercombe. Number 59, Jeff Hip, who's been in, been in on so many tackles, and this is this one. James Williams runs up inside tough. And again, the Bulldogs have an opportunity to score, put some points on the board, and go ahead. Second down a long six. The fullback with the room. He's close to the end zone, stopped at the one. It'll be first and goal for the Bulldogs of Fresno State. Again, Sean Foy, number 90, made the tackle. But the dogs are driving. Well, John, they've driven like this before. They've gotten down within scoring range before, and they have come up short. Can the Titans get bullets and dodge another bullet? It will be very difficult. The ball is just outside the one-yard line. First and goal. No tackle for Knight running into the game late. There's that heavy T offense. Here's Mosley. That's it. He'll be all alone for the touchdown. Anthony Mosley in the end zone, and the Bulldogs have regained the lead. This time they reverse rolls. James Williams leading the blocking for Anthony Mosley. His second touchdown of the night. His third of the year. Well, on this play, they use the, the heavy side left, and they go to the heavy side. Lots of blockers out there, and Mosley just walks into the end zone. No one there. Six points for the Bulldogs, and they take a 19-13 lead. With the extra point attack coming up. Knocking it through there is Barry Belli. He tacks on the extra point. Right back from the dogs to regain the lead. Red Monkey Communications. We have what you're looking for in car stereo units, base and mobile CB equipment, radar detectors, and cordless phones featuring a complete line of Cobra products. Let's Talk Cellular Phones, the finest state-of-the-art advances in communications for business and home. Red Monkey carries the Contel Cellular. We're talking business at $8.99 plus tax installed. Sales, service, and installation. Red Monkey Communications, 2949 North Parkway Drive off Highway 99 at Clinton. This is the Lord. He loves to ruin your pizza. If you've ever gotten cold pizza, a squash pizza, or pizza that just wasn't right, the Lloyd did it. At a Domino's Pizza, we avoid the Lloyd. So when you want hot, delicious, quality pizza delivered in less than 30 minutes, Domino's Pizza delivers. One call does it all. <laughs> Twenty to thirteen, Fresno State has come right back thanks to that sixty-four yard kickoff return by Brock Smith. Set up the touchdown drive and get Fresno State to lead. Kicking off is Barry Belli. He has just broken the school's all time scoring record. Belli will kick it deep. Far side of the field. Calhoun across the twenty near the twenty-three yard line, and that's where the Titans will have it. Brian Greer made the tackle. Let's check the scoring drive. As we said, the excellent kickoff return set it up. They only had to go 28 yards. They did it in five plays. Mosley getting a second touchdown of the night, his third on the year, and it's 20 to 13. So just like that, the kickoff return put the Bulldogs in business. And this time, Gene, they did not miss. And they've also given their defense a little room to operate with. Again, this defense coming into the ball game was the number one defense in the PC2A. Let's see what they can do against the really upstart Titans. If Smith both to the top of the screen, they go to the fullback mark Hood. Hood at the 25-yard line for a couple. Mike Walker for 90 defensively. He's in there with Ramsey. Jeffro Franklin has played well. David Grayson at linebacker, along with Nunn. Greer now. Mark Olson may not return. He was injured, you recall. He went out. Ramsey is in there now, along with Walker. It is second down at seven. Ball just outside the 25. Quick pitch to Calhoun at the 30. At the 32, he's upended by Webster. Excuse me, that's Pierce, number 20 in the lineup for Calhoun. So Pierce 
Getting the quick pitch and trying to get outside. Made it to the 30. Spotted at the 32. So it'll be third down and one. Short yardage play coming up for the Titans. Important to keep possession of the football. Clock moving 12.45 to play in the game. The fullback Hood has the first down and more. Across the 35 to the 37-yard line. The drive is alive. Greer and Stewart teamed up to make the tackle on Mark Hood. Rick Calhoun coming back into the game. Coach Murphy sending in instructions. Around the left side, you can see the big gap there. I think they fooled the Fresno defense because they got exactly what they wanted. Good blocking by Pierce. Fullerton comes up with a first down. Also, James Good doing a good job out there putting that block in. From deep at that back. pass. Calhoun still with it, throws downfield. It's incomplete, deflected. That was Thornton, the closest to it. Grayson got a piece of it, and the ball falls incomplete. That's a good call from the end zone. Calhoun, who's rushing the ball so well, does a good job, like he's going to run, looks up, wants to throw. But I think. Well, he's lucky he didn't come up with an interception there. He threw a bullet, but it was to the wrong man. He had a possibility downfield, but I guess you could make an exception when a tailback who runs the ball as well as Calhoun does doesn't exactly throw the perfect pass. We told you, trick plays anytime, any place on the field. Second down, 10. Ball at the 37 yard line. Calhoun's got a big hole on his side. Across midfield he goes. It'll be a first down for the Titans. Grayson made the tackle, but not before Calhoun had the big gainer. 14 yards on the play. And that was all made possible by Greg Hammond, the guard, who pulls and comes across and blocks Jethro Franklin. Franklin, number 67, he will get trap blocked. There it is. Number 62, Greg Hammond does a good job of blocking, and then he holds on a little bit, gets the job done. Franklin says, where is he? He's downfield, Jethro. He's gone. Just on the other side of midfield, first and ten. White and Gibbs to the short side of the field, the bottom of the screen, as Barber now checks off. To Calhoun. Still on his feet, fighting down to the 45. It is Pierce, not Calhoun. Pierce is in the lineup now. Five-yard pickup. It'll be second and five. Hanneman made the tackle. The lineup now is Eric Franklin. Calhoun is on the sideline. Franklin now, the third tailback, comes in for Pierce. You see Pierce going off. Calhoun awaits him there. Mark Hill in for Gibb. Hill and White to the top of the screen on second and five. Franklin and Hood, the running back. Franklin, squeezing for about a yard. Ryan Greer, number 69, made the tackle. Ten minutes and 57 seconds left in the game. That quick touchdown here in the fourth quarter has put Fresno State on top. Until then, it's been a very spooky night for the Bulldogs, who led by 10 at halftime, a 10-point third period for Fullerton State. Got the Titans back in it, tied it at 13-13. It's now 20 to 13. Again, you have to give an awful lot of credit to this Fullerton offense, their offensive line. They've done a super job against the number one defense in the conference, and they continue to move that line of scrimmage to continue to hold on to the football, and they're close. That's what they want to do. They want to be close at the end and have a chance to win it. Barber's quick pass to White. Needs to get across the 40 and does. So White able to pick up the first down. Wilburn made the tackle. That time, Pearson Burns were the running back, but he went up quick to White, and White was able to get the first down. We do have a flag down, though, so we'll have to await the call. Apparently, it's against Fresno State, so the drive will continue. This is not the first time we've seen this particular play to number 21, Todd White, trying to get him in a one-on-one -on -one situation, try to make the defensive back miss. This makes one miss, but there's another one there. And they converge, making the tackle. Good job of gang tackling by 
the Bulldogs. And we'll tack some more yardage on that. That move was the one that got the first down. The penalty brings it down inside the 30 to the 29. Probably roughing the quarterback. I think after he got rid of the football. Roughing the passer. On in defense. First down. So right back come the Titans. And Jim Sweeney pacing the far sideline. 10-14 to play in the game. His team is up by a touchdown. But the Bulletin Titans don't have any quit in them. They continue to come at you. Dylan White, the receiver, to the bottom of the screen. Straight ahead running by Hood. He's tripped up on the play by Brian Greer. Back in the tailback on that series now is Calhoun. So it's Hood. Calhoun back in there. Fullerton continuing to hold on to the football, continuing to move. The clock is ticking down. What they want to do is they want to eat up yardage, eat up time on the clock, tie this ball game up. They just want to be close with this game yes, to have a chance to win it. That's the way they went into the ball game, and so far it's working that way. White and gets the receiver from the wide side of the field. Calhoun at the 25, spins his way inside the 20-yard line. He's close to another first down for the Titans. It'll depend on the spot. He needs to get across the 19 to the 18-yard line, and he's going to be very close. You know, John, we talked about uh, the ability or, or let's say the size of certain players, whether they can play pro football or not. And we talked about Calhoun. You know, there's a difference between a player who is small and a, different, and a player who's short. I think Calhoun is a player who is short, not small. And I think if you watch the way he runs, when he goes through there and he takes hits from linebackers and linemen, he doesn't go down in a hurry. He bounces off tacklers and so forth, a lot like the player in New York, the Giants are running back there. He's a player who's short, but he's not small. And I think that, uh, that Rick Calhoun can have a very successful career in, in pro football. He may want to go to Canada, though, where a player like his, in, you know, they can utilize his abilities a lot more. You also have to admire the Titans who play most of their schedule on the road. And they have hung tough on the road here tonight. Clock winding down to nine minutes. Third and less than a yard to go. Another big third down play. Barber straight ahead. If they'll give him the forward progress, he'll have the first down. Just needed to get inside the 19. And the Titans assume they have made that first down. Indeed, they have. First and ten. Let's watch the surge down in the pits. Number 60 comes in, puts the hit on the quarterback, but not in time. They pick up the first down. That was Chris Reinhardt, but Reinhardt a little bit late. They got the yard they needed. First and 10 at the 18-yard line. Clock running, 8.45 left in the game. The Titans of Cal State Fullerton driving for the tying touchdown. Take the Calhoun. Barber rolling to his left. He's got room out in front. He throws on the move for the end of the touchdown. The touchdown to a fullback hood. And now Cal State Fullerton an extra point away from tying it up again. That time Barber kept play alive. Hood broke loose and he was all alone. I don't think anyone would have expected this type of play from quarterback Ronnie Barber. He nearly gets sacked here. He breaks away. This is the toughest pass to throw for a quarterback running to his left and having to throw the ball on the run. Makes an excellent pass. Hood nearly has the ball bounce out of his hands, but he holds on to it for six points. And the Titans continue to come back, and they're about to tie the ball game up. Bradley with the all-important extra point. It's down. The kick is up. The kick is good, and we are high. 8.31 of football left. We are even in Fresno, California. Announcing the Valvoline Four Guard I Love a Parade Sweepstakes. Win a trip for four to four of America's greatest parades. To enter, watch the next commercial and remember what the driver of the smoking car says. Then go to a participating store for details. Big parade this year. It's the economy. Oh, Russell. Russell, what kind of motor oil are you using? Motor oil is motor oil. Motor oil definitely is not motor oil. A four-cylinder engine works harder and needs the extra protection of specially formulated Valvoline Forger. Not much of a break this year. That's the economy. Oh, Russell! Come get the best of the USA. Come out and play the American way.
Heisman Trophy candidate D.J. Dozier leads top 10 ranked Penn State against West Virginia Saturday night at 7.30 Eastern live on ESPN. Number 14 quarterback Ronnie Barber makes the most difficult pass a quarterback can make. Right-handed quarterback running to his left, throws the ball on the run. Very difficult to do, but he gets it right on the money to Mark Hood. Six points, and we're all tied up. Great effort from the quarterback, Ronnie Barber. It is 2020, his second touchdown catch of the season for the fullback, Mark Hood, an 18 yard scoring play. An excellent drive for the Titans, and Len Strandley will kick it off. Again, Kelly Skipper and Brock Smith will be deep. Trips it up the middle. Brock Smith at the 12 yard line. He broke the last one for 64 and dives ahead to the 34 on this one. 826 left in the football game. The Bulldogs will have it when we come back to Fresno. The Volvo 760, the car for people whose means have changed, but whose values haven't. Smile. You just drop the film in. It almost loads itself. Then aim and shoot. Have you ever seen a share of their baby picture? I have. <laughs> It's a great shot. Nothing to it. <laughs> we have eight minutes and 26 seconds to settle it. It is 2020. The ball will be at the 33-yard line, and the Bulldogs of Fresno State will have it. Kevin Sweeney brings them up. I'm John Sanders, along with Dean Washington. Hope you're enjoying ESPN's Thursday Night Football. We'll see the Bulldogs again next Thursday night again, 9 o'clock Eastern Time. Mosley, the fullback with all kinds of room. He's across midfield, knocked off his feet. Not before he gets to the 42-yard line. Mike Chappell nailed him, but he was wide open that time. We are seeing some awfully good offensive football. Tremendous execution as evidence on that play. Mosley bouncing to the outside and made a great run. But he took a great hit, too, as he tries to get up on the sidelines. A little shaken up. Probably just has a win knocked out of him, but it was a terrific effort. Good run. And again, Fresno, good field position, knocking on the door. A 23-yard pickup for Mosley. He's out of the lineup. Sweeney with time. Now he's protected breakdown, and he runs out of bounds. Sweeney very good at not being sacked. Sean Foy forced him out of bounds. He'll pick up about a yard on the play. 8.06 left in the football game. 20-20 is our score. That's one of the things. I know that there are several pro scouts in attendance at this ball game tonight. There are lots of potential pro players on both of these squads. Kevin Sweeney getting lots of scrutiny. And one of the things that a lot of pro teams look for in a quarterback is the ability to avoid the sack. And Kevin Sweeney has certainly shown that ability. Very nifty on his feet. Quick pitch to Williams. Oh, get that and he is straightened up and nailed by Bill Bryan, who's back in there. Bryan left the lineup earlier. He's had those shoulder problems. He put a lick on Williams that time. Well, if Bryan had a shoulder problem, it certainly wasn't his right shoulder. Watch this. Number 88 in the white. Bites off the block. A little head and shoulder action. Good tackle. Kelly Brooks is now the fullback in there. Brooks is playing. Mosley went down with that hit after the 23-yard gain. This is third down and six. Let's see what Sweeney does. Great back to Williams. Williams gets the block. It's going to be very close to the first down, maybe just short. He needed to get across the 35-yard line. Ryan Fullen out there leading the blocking for him as he dumped it off. Let's take a look. Kevin Williams likes to throw the ball downfield as we watch the entire secondary, but he's smart enough to take what he gets. Doesn't see anything open downfield. He just dumps the ball off to James Williams, and now they're looking at a fourth and about a yard and a half. Let's see what they decide on fourth down. Let's go downstairs to our mic. I think they've already called the play, and they're going on fourth down. The game ties. 
The sweep, Williams with two blockers and first down. John Boyd made the tackle. Kelly Brooks, the fullback, led the charge. Williams picks up the big first down. They sealed down the people to the inside. That was the difference. Williams was able to string it out and then made the cut back. He knew where he had to go to get the first down, and it was really easy, but it was made easy by the fact that the offensive lineman sealed down the inside linebackers, and that left that hole in there for the first down. And again, Fresno has the football, and they're moving the ball on offense. This has been a terrific offensive show by both teams here in the second half. Clock running, 6.25 to play. Williams. Dances down inside the 25 to the 22 yard line. Excuse me, it's Kelly Skipper now. Number 26 has come on for James Williams. Williams picked up the big first down. Skipper came on and got the ball at the tailback position. So Skipper. He's 5'6", 175 pounds. So they don't go up in size, they go down in size. Just short of a first down, giving nine yards on the play. It'll be second and one. Inside, six minutes remaining. Talk about big plays for the tight defense. They're facing them now. Skipper. A surge takes him inside the 20, and that'll be another first down for Fresno State. That clock continuing to tick away once they reset the yard markers. Let's go down to the play, Mike, and see what the first down call is going to be. We got. We got I right, right toss 80. It's going to be a sweep to the wide side of the field. It is. Skipper. He's got room at the 10. He's run out of bounds as he gets inside the 10 yard line. Paul Portizzi from his right guard position leading the blocking and Skipper bangs it down inside the 10. Does he have enough for a first down? Looks like it. Skipper is not the tallest back, but he is really the best back in the open field when it comes to running. It shows his speed as he gets to the outside. That's a nifty job. Portizzi on the block. Paul Portizzi, number 62, leading the way. First down and goal to go. 5-18 left in the football game. It's 2020 here in Fresno, California. Another good one on ESPN's Thursday Night College Football. Skipper. Quinton Knight, number 69 there defensively, along with Sean Foy. Second and goal, ball inside the five. John, even though there's four minutes, 50 seconds left, I really believe that the outcome of this football game will be determined by whether the Bulldogs score a touchdown on this play. If Fullerton can keep them from scoring a touchdown and force the field goal, then the tide swings in their favor. But if they get six, Skipper Powers to the one. He's not going to get in. It'll be third and goal. They have gone to young Kelly Skipper, the sophomore from Eugene, Oregon, on this drive. Kelly's father, an assistant with the New Orleans Saints, formerly coached also in the USFL. The ball at the 1 4 22. Says the clock and counting. Let's get the play from the sideline. We have, yes, T heavy left, 80. T heavy left, 80. And we've seen it before. T heavy left will be that unbalanced line to the wide side of the field, to the left side of the field. They have scored on that twice in the game tonight. Now stack them up on the left side. There you see it. They come back to the short side. Touchdown! Fresno State answers. The Bulldogs have come right back. Tim and Skipper leading the blocking. It is James Williams who took it into the end zone and puts the Bulldogs back in front. He had lots of folks out in front. They overshift to the left, but they come back to the right side. But he has two running backs who are now blocking backs to lead the way. And about the only thing that's going to stop the number 29, James Williams, will be a cart on the outside. Gets into the end zone, six points. And they're just out on top, 26-20. They add the extra point, it will be 27-20. And Belli, who's already broken the all-time scoring record for Fresno State, will be on. Williams now 19 carries, 116 yards. He picks up the key touchdown with 3.51 left 
the Bulldogs are growling with the extra point attempt coming up. All you need now is a car that won't start. At least one car company won't leave you stranded. If one of their cars ever breaks down, someone will be sent out to help. Any time, any place. It's part of a roadside assistance plan called On Call. But the best part about this plan is that it comes with a Volvo. So you may never need it. I'll see you later. I'm Duke. Now get this. My yuppie cousin puts ordinary oil filters into his turbo Yaha instead of using Purolator's new turbo filter. I mean, even cooking knows the turbos run hot enough to cook ordinary filters. But Purolator's turbo likes it hot. <laughs> Not unlike cooking. Buggy. ESPN's live presentation of Thursday Night College Football has been brought to you by Volvo, a car you can believe in. By the people who make mass containers naturally. By Prudential Base Security, rock solid, market wide. And by the U.S. Armed Forces, it's a great place to start. The folks in red are delighted because their Bulldogs have come back once again to grab the lead. The extra point attempt coming up. 3.51 left in the game. It's been a dandy, Gene. You have to give so much credit to the way the Titans have played in this game. I don't think anyone really gave them a chance to be this close. But I right, knocks it through there, no problem. 27-20. So an excellent scoring drive capped by the one-yard touchdown run of Williams. They stacked the offense up to the left side. He went back the other way. We talked about that heavy offense to the right side of your screen. You can see the overload. They take a tackle and move him over to the right. They have more people to the right. Bulletin, they put more linebackers over there. So what is the Bulldogs? What do they do? They run back to the left side. What they do is that they shift that tackle over there they say okay you go cover over there we'll come back to the weak side and we will use our running blocks running backs as blockers and we feel we have the advantage so oftentimes they can go up to the line of scrimmage and determine which way to run at the line of scrimmage but on that particular play they called it from the sideline 27 20 Fresno's eight led by 10 at halftime saw that go away came back to take the lead it was 13-13. They led 20-13. to The Titans tied it up. There's Calhoun back to receive the kickoff. It will be coming from Barry Belli. Once again, this time they marched 67 yards to score the go-ahead touchdown again. Will it be enough? Well, we're going to find out in the final three minutes and 51 seconds. But the way the Titans have played offensively in the second half, you can't assume that they won't be able to move the football. They've you're done it very well. You're exactly right. If the Titans have any sort of reverse run back. This would be a time to, to do it right now. I don't know if they'll get it to kind of kick. No, they could handle that one. They could go out of bounds. It does. But this is a situation where if you are the Titans, Fresno jumped out in front. They had the lead. Their people are going to be coming down trying to cover that kick. They're going to be snorting and coming down there just trying to tear some heads off, blowing in the direction particularly of a Calhoun. But if they have a reverse, and we know that Fullerton has all the trick plays, get them flowing one way, maybe come back. They need something to get back in this ballgame quickly. I'm not sure they can march down the field again. I mean, they've done it a couple of times, but again, I have to get back to the fact they're playing against the number one defense in the league, and at some point, I think they have to rise to the occasion. Fresno, their defense. So if you have some nice trick plays, I think this is the time to pull them out for the Titans. Well, they will try to keep the ball out of the hands of number 28, Rick Calhoun, if they can. Back there to help out are Eric Franklin. Also number seven, Mark Hill. And if they kick it real short, Todd Krukop is there. See what Belli does with this one. The kick coming from his own 30-yard line. It'll be high. Tries to keep it toward the sideline. Oh, no. Calhoun oh. caught it and stepped out of bounds at the 12. He was so eager to run it back. Had he let it go, it had gone out of bounds. They'd been kicking from the 25. Well, that's uh, what... Fresno is trying to do keep the ball close to the sideline and use that sideline, get the angles in terms of coverage. Calhoun gets there, his momentum carries him out of, out of bounds. He gets there, he says, I just can't do anything. He says, 
What a mistake I made. If he'd let that ball go, it would have gone out of bounds, and they would have had another opportunity to field the kickoff. But now, instead, they're starting on about their own 12-yard line. They're backed up. And it's White and Gibbs to the wide side of the field. Let's see what Barber does on first down 10. The Calhoun bounces out of there, but he's not going to get away. This time, Calhoun will not get away. Not out of the grasp of Cliff Hanneman, number 77. When, once that fella gets a hold of you, he's not going to let go. He made all PC2A inside linebacker Cliff Hanneman. The hole is stacked up in the middle where he wanted to go. Tries to bounce to the outside, but Cliff Hanneman is there and throws to Rick Calhoun for a loss. About a three-yard loss on the play. And Fresno State came in averaging 403 yards a game offensively. They're at 417. 228 rushing, 198 passing, second down and long. It's second and 13. Calhoun again, scrambling, trying to get, excuse me, it's Pierce in the lineup now, scrambling, trying to get back to the line of scrimmage. Walker tripped him up. But Pierce, they're going to call him down. I think his knee hit the ground. Walker shot through the gap, got an arm tackle, and I think that... Uh, Pierce's knee hit the ground, and I think that's where they're going to mark the football. So back to the eight it goes. It'll be for down and 15. If they've got a trick play that'll pull them out of this hole, now's the time. Pierce and Hood, the running back. Fans are on their feet. No tricks here. Barber steps up, throws. Is it intercepted? It is. The diving interception made by Michael Stewart. Stewart picks it off. The Bulldogs with 2.19 to go are in business. I think Ronnie Barber has made only one mistake in this entire football game, and he makes it right here. Forces the football, and a good interception by number five, Mike Stewart, who dives to the sidelines and comes up with a big play. And as I mentioned, John, when you have a defense that is a number one defense in the league, at some point, they're going to rise to the occasion. The Bulldogs certainly have picked the appropriate opportunity here to stave off a bullet and drive. They had the ball on about the 32-yard line, so they are in great shape. Player down on the field, though. That is the first turnover of the game for the Titans of Cal State Fullerton. Comes at a bad time, 2.19 to play. Volvo 760, the car for people whose means have changed, but whose values haven't. Did you know most wine coolers have more calories a bottle than a glazed donut? A California cooler has more calories than a slice of Boston cream pie. And Bartles and James has more calories than a stack of buckwheat pancakes. But Dewey Stevens Premium Light is light, with a clean, fresh taste of a third less calories, about the same as the average granola bar. So you decide, one of those heavyweights or Dewey Stevens Premium Light. reason that quarterback Ronnie Barber may have made a mistake on this play is that number 90 Mike Walker is right in his face as he's about to throw the football right left side of your screen right there both Walker and Jethro Franklin converge on Barber so that may have thrown his pass off a little bit but regardless of what the reason is coach Jim Sweeney and his football team have the football on about the 32 yard line of Fullerton and they really are in great position here to put this football game away. The running backs are Kelly Skipper and Kelly Brooks. The Kelly boys are in the running back behind Sweeney. Skipper. Puts in the air as he gets inside the 30 to the 29, giving four yards on the play. It'll be second down and six. Keep in mind, originally on the schedule, this was a home game for the Titans. As a matter of fact, this is homecoming. They have a program they put out. And at the present time, homecoming is taking place at the El Paso Catina. 
Cantina, which is across the street from the Cal State Fullerton campus. So that's where homecoming is being held tonight while the team, as always, plays on the road. Let's go to the scoring summary now and fill you in on what has happened and what has been a very exciting football game, 12-12. Fell I with a 42-yard field goal. Then they made a 10-0 Mosley's one-yard touchdown run. That's the way it was after the first quarter. Second quarter, though, Stranley with a 39-yard field goal. Cut that lead to 10-3. Before halftime, it was Belli again, and it was 13-3 at halftime. Boy, things changed in the third quarter. Ronnie Barber got it in from one yard out in the third quarter. Came at 5-51. That cut it back to 13-10. And then before that third quarter ended, it was Stranley with a 42-yard field goal, and it was 13-13. That woke up the Bulldogs a little bit in the fourth quarter. Anthony Mosley's two-yard touchdown run made it 20-13. Then Barber to Hood, an 18-yard scoring play. It was tied 20 to 20. And then James Williams coming off the bench. He had not been in there much. He picked up the one-yard touchdown run to make it 27 to 20. The first turnover of the game of the Titans has given the football back to the boys in red. They have it inside the 30 at the 29-yard line. 27-20, 2:14 to play. Let's give some credit to the Titans. They went to Hawaii over the weekend, played a tough game over there, lost. Had to come back, short practice time, no days off. Right back to work for this game. It's not easy, and back on the road again. But again, the thing that everyone emphasizes about the Titans is that they've never quit. No quit in this football team. Here is Skipper. The Titans bring it out. They've got him for a loss of two. John Foy putting some pressure on. Skipper really did not want to run out of bounds. The clock had stopped with 2.08, but he had no place to go, Gene. Well, in this situation, if you have no place to go, the last place you want to go is out of bounds. Just go down. You're not going to pick up any more yardage. Just go down or turn into the oncoming tackle. The offense has really come on in the second half. Neither team has had to punt, which is probably good because the punting was not especially good in the first half. The ball back outside the 30. It'll be third down and long yardage. We always talk about big plays, but can there be a bigger play than this third down situation here? Bulldogs beat 27-20. Fullerton obviously still has another chance, but if they convert on this third down situation, now they're in field goal range. If they kick the field goal, then, you know, it's almost sayonara. Let, let's go down and, and hear what they're saying on the sideline. A little deception there. To act like he's going to throw, but he's not. They want to get up close enough to get the field goal. Like he said, we want. We got to make five yards. Try to make five yards to get the first down because they want to be in position to get that field goal, which will really be insurance. That will really put them out of range. Uh, I believe of, of Fullerton. Big big play. Big big play. Coach Gene Murphy on the sideline, wanting to be in the position when the game came down to the end of it to be close enough to win. Uh, if that interception had popped up. Fresno come up with that interception. If they had done that, it might be a dim story. Certainly the Titans have their backs against the wall. Let's see what happens. Third down and eight. The toss to Skipper. Trying to get outside. Still on his feet. He'll not get the first down. He will get the yardage to put them in pretty good shape. Oh, maybe now that will change the flags going the air. A minute, 57 seconds left. Flags everywhere. But the only thing you can say about that if you're a Fullerton fan is that that's really a shame to lose a good defensive effort with a late hit. It will make it a first down. And you see the reaction of the defense. Mike Schaffel, who loves to hit people, here it is. Let's see if we can see where the penalty occurs. Number 94. Coming in late, a oh, little extra effort, little push there. The official is right on the spot and throws the flag. First foul on the defense. First down. Boy, that's a shame. A tremendous defensive effort on the part of the Titans. 
but all for naught because of a, a player who doesn't use very good judgment. First down and 10 at the 12 yard line. Nothing fancy here. Kelly Skipper straight ahead. Two timeouts remaining for the Titans. One left for the Bulldogs. But at this point, Coach Gene Murphy not using the timeouts he has. Now he does. I think, though, he has to feel very good about the way his team has played. Coming here into the stadium in Fresno, where the Bulldogs have played so well, and they've been in, the, been in this football game and have played extremely good football, but they certainly had their backs against the wall now. Just one big turnover. That interception really has, has been the, the big difference, but nonetheless, a, a great effort by the Titans. We've got more exciting college football coming up Saturday night here on your Source for Sports. The CFA coverage continues. Penn State and West Virginia. A couple of years ago, the Mountaineers knocked off the Lions at Mountaineer Field in Morgantown. The game will start at 7.30. Join us at 7. The Hartford Insurance Group College Football Report with Larry Burnett, Chris Berman, and Bino Cook will get it all started Saturday live on ESPN. We'll be back with Fresno State a week from tonight here on our Thursday night ESPN College Football. We will see Kevin Sweeney once again as he takes on the Rebels of UNLV. 189 yards. He's going to need a huge effort if he's going to break the record next week. But keep in mind, he does have time to go after Flutie's record before this season ends. But since the injuries to his shoulder, each week his, his statistics have gotten progressively better. I believe last week was around 106 or something in that neighborhood, now around 180. So it won't be long before he's back in a 300-yard category. A minute 39 left. We're running long. We'd like to remind you that the Sports Center will follow here on ESPN. Second down. Kelly Skipper does just that. Skips into the line. They don't need much. There's another timeout. That'll do it. That's the Titans' last timeout with a minute and 33 seconds. Gogarty, Unger, Jones up front right now. Foy, Brian, Hip, and Hinton. Can't say enough about the job that Foy, Brian, and Hip have done in the linebacker spots. Mike Schaffel, James Howard, Trent Baker, Tyrone Pope in the secondary. So what about the men up front? Brad Heyer, the center, Brian Kazarian, Mike Shalatsev, Mike Withercombe, Jeff Truchelle have done the job along that offensive line. Paul Flug and Chris Dugan have both played a lot of tight end in this game tonight. And we've seen the second running backs, Kelly Brooks and Kelly Skipper, in the last couple of series of plays. And Kevin Sweeney has gone all the way at quarterback. And Baker and Taylor have been the wide receivers. Now Reggie Hill has checked into the lineup to replace Pope in that defensive secondary. It's 27 to 20. We still have a minute and 33 to play. It's a third down play. The ball is at the eight. So it's third and about six. Well, the, the game is not over. I've, I've certainly seen some situations, and I'm sure you have too, where the tide has turned even with less time than this. I would imagine uh, what Gordon wants to do is, is to try to get one more opportunity to score the football, score with the football, and then obviously if they did do that, they would always have kick, but uh, that's a very hypothetical situation. The first thing they need to do is get their hands back on the football with, with the time remaining on the clock, and they are out of time. Out. Third down. Skipper. Straightens up as he gets the five yard. I know that's Williams back in the lineup. Skipper has been running most of the time. Williams came on to get the touchdown. He gets the tough yard, he's there to the five, but it'll be fourth down. Sean Foy again on the tackle. How many times have we called his name tonight? Fourth and three. They cannot stop the clock. It shows a minute eight. They'll run it down. Probably take the delay and kick the field goal. The ball at the five. Fourth down. The Bulldogs in no hurry. They are 46 seconds away from victory here tonight. Beating Gene Murphy's team for the second straight year and increasing their lead in the series to 8-6. to six. The Titans won in 83 and 84 when they had some outstanding seasons. A year ago, the Bulldogs won 42-7. to seven. His 27-20 to 20 
right now. Nothing easy for Coach Jim Sweeney tonight about this victory. Barry Belli, who is a distant relative of, Mar of Melvin Belli. The one thing that they want here in the San Joaquin Valley is some recognition. One reason that Coach Jim Sweeney is here, he thinks this is a sleeping giant of college football. And, uh, he would love to get a chance to go to another bowl game. Of course, last year they won the California Bowl right here. Well, we've seen block field goal attempts already. It's not over. This will be a 27-yard attempt. And again, they waste too much time. But the clock, of course, had not started. Sweeney wanting them to make sure of everything. Get it set. He'll back them up another five. The ball comes back to the 15. You know, the one thing that uh, Coach Sweeney may have been doing in that situation, because the hash marks are wider in college football, oftentimes you get a better angle to kick the ball the further you move back. Because when you're close in there, you have a severe angle. So I think what he wanted to do was to get a better angle for Bella. It becomes a 32-yard attempt. Belli's kick is up and true. And three more on the board for the Bulldogs. Fresno State increases its lead to 30 to 20. A 10-point advantage. And Belli has had a big night. There's a flag down on the field. Player is, is going off on his own ability. There was a player who was down we thought was injured, but I think there's going to be a penalty called anyway, probably unsportsmanlike conduct. The flags are down in the area of the 10 to 15 yard line. The referee goes over and explains something to Coach Gene Murphy. Let's find out what he's talking about. I think they threw a player out of the game. Dead ball, personal foul, enforced on a kickoff. So Kevin Sweeney will continue to chase Doug Flutie. He has picked up some ground tonight. There are the passing totals. Sweeney moving up on Brian McClure first. Going to go get him. And then there is Doug Flutie down the road. And that will be coming up next Thursday night here on ESPN. Fresno State taking its show on the road to the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, 6 o'clock on the West Coast, 9 o'clock on the East Coast, one week from tonight as ESPN's Thursday night college football continues. There is young Mr. Sweeney. Seems to get stronger, better, healthier every week. Well, his dad can certainly be proud of the way his quarterback and son has performed tonight. And the thing that has impressed me the most about Sweeney, I certainly was aware of his passing ability, but I didn't realize that he could scramble as well as he does. Very, very effective quarterback, buys a lot of time for his receivers with the ability to move around. Now, White is deep along with Franklin. And whenever White gets in a situation to get the football, you can look for something strange because the football is going to be kicked off from the 50. Bellamy will try to knock it out of the stadium, but he kicks it short. White at the 5. To the 20. Still on his feet at about the 23. 37 seconds of football left in Bulldog Stadium. Coach Murphy will send out his quarterback, Ronnie Barber, for one more series of downs. Well, you could believe that the Bulldogs will put their defensive backs practically back to the goal line. They're not going to allow Bulletin to throw the ball anywhere near over their heads, keep everything in front of them. 37 seconds to go, no timeouts. This one is all but wrapped up. Barber throws it away. 31 seconds left. Talk about deep zones. <laughs> Good night, though, for Ronnie Barber. Except for that one errant pass, which may have been caused by the pressure from the Bulldog defense, he's had really an outstanding ball game. Ronnie is a transfer from El Camino Junior College. Second down, 10. And watch the clock tick down. Completes it to the fullback. Our good will get out of bounds. 
Hood short of first down yardage with 25 seconds left in the game. A 10 point lead at halftime. The third quarter belonged to the Titans. They came roaring back to a turnover and a penalty. But again, Jim Sweeney's troops continue their dominance here at home. This will be 11 in a row at home. And 18 of the last 20. Trying to increase the conference record to 4 and 1. Overall record to 7 and 1. That's incomplete. Webster there on defense. Along with Wilkerson. Down on the play is the intended receiver. The 31, that's Curtis Brown, who's in the ball game. The PCAA Conference Championship. The champion plays against the winner of the MAC Conference in the California Bowl. Fresno State will go to 4 and 1, still chasing San Jose State. And keep in mind that Fullerton State will play San Jose State next week. We especially want to thank the coaches for allowing us to use the microphone as we did. Coach Jim Sweeney and Coach Gene Murphy. Jim, thank you very much. Not many coaches in college football would let us eavesdrop as we did here tonight. We appreciate their help. The athletic director is Jerry Cunningham, former UCLA player and coach. Scott Johnson, the sports information director for helping us tonight. Ed Carroll, the athletic director at California State Fullerton. And Mel Franks, the SID. We appreciate all of their help. Our spotters, Ken Johnson and Mike Wise and Mitch Reinhardt for helping us with stats as we wind it down. This is the pass play where the player was injured, Curtis Brown. Goes up and he takes a shot right in the rib cage area. And we've seen that how many times have you seen a wide receiver go up for a ball, totally exposed, and get a shot right in the ribs or kidneys. That's I've seen it a lot. How many times have you felt it physically? <laughs> Ask me, do I still feel it? <laughs> Hopefully it's not a serious injury. Uh, I don't. I don't think it is. But uh, one never knows. I know that I've been in situations like that where I've landed on my head and just sort of when they came out, says, "Let me just lie here for a little bit. It'll be okay in just a few minutes." 18 seconds still left on the clock. 30 to 20 is our score. The Bulldogs woke up in time. And Curtis Brown is still down. For Cal State Fullerton, they will be at home in Santa Ana next week to play San Jose. And as we have mentioned a couple of times, Fresno State on the road a week from tonight, Thursday, November the 6th, at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Bob Lee and Alan Massengale are standing by. We're hurrying, fellas. As soon as we get done, you can take over for Sports Center. Back in our ESPN studios. And another reminder, Penn State, West Virginia. Just how good is Penn State? Well, I think they proved that Joe Paterno was right. 18 of 20. 11 in a row now at home for Coach Jim Sweeney and the Bulldogs. Capacity here, 30,000. We had very close to a full house tonight. They have done better than that most of the time, averaging about 34,000 fans a game. And they do have the capability to enlarge the stadium, which they will do at some point, to maybe 45 or 50,000. A hand for Curtis Brown as he comes off. So let's credit Jim Sweeney for the job he's doing of elevating this program, and certainly his son. It's a family affair. Kevin Sweeney, the outstanding year and career that he's had, has brought a lot of good attention to Fresno State, and we'll see him again next Thursday. John, as you mentioned earlier, this, this Fresno program in this whole area really is like a sleeping giant. This, this city, the metropolitan area, the fastest growing area in all of California. No real competition here in this valley, no pro teams. Uh, this is really bulldog territory, and uh, the future just looks awfully bright for this uh, program. Incomplete on fourth down, and one reason they are still talking bowl here is because they know that should they get invited to Anaheim or San Diego, they have thousands and thousands of fans that they can take with them. And that is like money in the bank for a bowl. And that's what one of the things that they look at. How many fans can you bring? And they can take a lot. And not only that, they have a marquee player in uh, Kevin Sweeney. Here's a player who uh, certainly by that time will have broken Doug Goody's record. So they have lots of things going for them. Eric Bouchelle will be in the lineup now as the backup quarterback, number 12. Happens to be from Fullerton, California. Brother Steve is in Texas Rangers organization. 
he will finish this off for Steve Buschel on ESPN. Coverage of the College World Series in Omaha, Nebraska. And Steve brother Eric will end this one tonight as you watch the clock count down it will be a final of 30 to 20 the Bulldogs defeating the Titans Jim Sweeney will go over and shake hands with his good friend Gene Murphy Sweeney wins it tonight by 10 30 to 20 back with more from Fresno after this